is that, is that, is that, there we go, it's working now. It's working now. God, putting the child to bed took longer than I bloody thought. That one, there we go, I'll do. Lately, every single, every single evening, it's been about 6.30 starts going, I'm tired, I want to go to bed. Tonight, 7.30, I don't want to go to bed. Anyway, hello. <laughs> what a start. What a start. Um, right, so. <laughs> Watch this spectacle unfold. Hopefully levels are good. So, we're playing 40, what the 40,000 Rogue Trader. There we go. Um, which is a game I've been looking forward to for um, quite a while, to be honest. I was playing the, uh, the playtest a few months ago and really enjoying it but I didn't want to get too far because obviously that will ruin it for me when I get to play the entire game so it is coming out tomorrow I believe um I've got early access so thank you for thank you to who the fuck do this it's Al something isn't it Al Al Cat Al Cat Games there we go it's Al Cat Games so <clears throat> so I have carefully been crafting my character uh, it's pretty it's pretty pretty moddable to be honest what i really like though is that if you pick one of these portraits your character's base face matches the portrait so if you pick like i don't know mr dreadlock guy your guy has dreadlocks and the correct beard i'm like that's fucking amazing that's just how yes are you gonna be trading rogue you fucking know it guy man you fucking know anyway so i've picked this guy <laughs> Because um, I wanted, I wanted to just be a complete asshole. Um, so why does there appear to be? Sun it's not sunlight. It's uh, it's a light. <laughs> it's just it's not sun. It's also I'm a British man. Where the fuck do you think sunlight would be coming from? It's actually the light. It's the lamp I use for my because it's got like um, a magnifying thing. It's what I use for my for painting because my eyes are shit. And I, it's pink because technically my it was my wife's and I've kind of nabbed it, but I'm not super worried about colour, but there we go. Uh, so yes, that's the light I'm using. <laughs> I'm British. What the fuck? We don't have sunshine. What the fuck are you talking about? It's December. What, we see sun for, for like another three, four months. Magnificently corpulent looking sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so. So we've gone with, like, basically, basically I was like, we're going to be a noble. So I've picked, you get a load of selections for your, your character selection. So I've gone with Imperial World. And so we've got Humanity's Finest. And the reason I've gone for this is because we're going for the noble origin, which means we want as high fellowship as possible. So Humanity's Finest, we can just, we can, we can pump that fellowship up. We can be fucking charismatic despite the way we look. Um, so that gives us some additional talents as well. So we get ready to serve. So this is all basically you know looking at fellowship bonuses um more resolve you get no no heresy so you get ba basically these are bonuses that you can give to your team which is quite nice because um our character's kind of a bit a bit buffy anyway does he have a monocle he does yes he does i mean you can change like the color i don't know if that changes there i went red because i felt like that was just uh it's just a good book. So we've got we've got Imperial. You can go like Death World, Voidborn, Hive World, Forge. Um, Forge World, you get like three different picks between uh you get like more you get like subdermal armor or you know, you get some um, some picks. Fortress World is all about shooting. So you can cut you can kind of min-max it if you like. I've just gone for Imperial World because I thought I kind of that kind of worked with us. And uh, we get the Imperial World bonus there. I've gone for fellowship to boost that up because our origin is going to be noble. And uh, so the high nobility of the Imperium are an enormous, privileged, and powerful elite. A breed apart from the common masses, they rule. You grew into Adaholt. Adulthood is hit. It's not a good start, is it? Adulthood upon a, press, a pedestal, a pedal stool of affluence and grandeur that towered high above the common masses. You expected their obedience and lived upon the fruits of their toil, surrendered to your family in solemn fealty. Um, I think it's actually like an implant. That's what it's supposed to be. Um, so our, our skill is you serve me. So basically we can assign um, a friendly character to be our servant until the end of combat. 
and they will gain some characteristics and then there's also f additional bonuses that we can either give them or get ourselves basically for that those particular so basically we get we get a baldric you can be a psyche yeah and you can pick different psychic powers yeah so yeah you can be um some of them are quite strong actually but there is i think there's like an overall like psychic danger zone so the more psychers you have in your party the more more chance you have hitting that and obviously then bad things happen um so i was tempted to go with that but i just kind of like the idea of being uh, a massive ass and uh, that's that's what i've gone for um, so we also get some so basically our skills are all about like if a noble uses an ability on their servant the servant gains one ap uh next turn uh, if a noble and servant are adjacent to each other at the start of the noble's turn they gain temporary wounds equal to the servant's toughness bonus or noble's fell bonus depending on which is higher basically it's all about giving giving bonuses and receiving bonuses with your servant makes sense uh, what's the navy officer the navy officer is he gets brace for impacts so once per combat for one round the navy officer and the allies in a three cell radius gain plus two deflection for each arch type taken by the navy officer they also cannot be forcibly moved or over penetrated there we go and they get things like do not falter uh, do not suffer negative effects of melee superiority for the entire combat in melee combat any target received by more allies and enemies receive 10 weapons there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff while well, it was affected by brace for impacts of only half damage from all attacks of opportunity, all that kind of stuff. But we're a noble. Um, so we get a triumph as well. I don't know whether this actually kind of like works into the story or whether it's just an additional skill modifier. But anyway, we have a feat of greatness. So we had a noble house's reputation destroyed and its members exiled from the sector. Fuck those guys. They're the worst. And then our darkest hour was we read a creepy book. Probably Harry Potter, to be honest. Okay, and my archetypes. This is basically our skill, our, our character type. Um, I've picked Officer because I think that kind of works with what we're kind of... Basically, my character's a massive fucking arse who doesn't want to do anything himself. He wants to get other people to do it. Um, so our Officer uses willpower and fellowship to improve the combat capabilities of their allies, turn them into even greater threats on the battlefield. Fell bonus for one round. Uh, and all that kind of good stuff. Bring them down. Uh, the officer immediately grants an ally an extra turn with action points equal to two and no movement points. And then of course we can you know, buff that up. Uh, can you change the clothes? Yes, you can change the clothes. You get armor that sort of overwrites it. Um, so for example, if you get like a carapace chest then he'll wear that i think i could be wrong um i'm not 100 percent sure to be honest um but depending on your your first archetype pick you can then pick a second archetype at level 16 and for the officer we can either go vanguard master tactician or grand strategist i'm probably going to go master tactician but i might go grand strategist i haven't decided yet but you know there's plenty of time to worry about that and finally characteristics i have boosted my fellowship up to 55 because a lot of our abilities sort of work with fellowship so you know the higher that is the better willpower's a little bit higher i've also given myself a little bit more ballistic skill just because i think i can't be entirely useless in combat and if i'm going to do anything it's going to be far away from people are going to hurt me and uh, then we have our void ship, which I've called the Novum Exped Expeditonum Odor. There we go. Let's see if anyone can work out what that means. So this is a sword class frigate. It's a combat ship. Hang on, let's get my phone out just in case my wife calls me because she's currently at a, a horrible event that she's going to have to deal with. This is why I had a child tonight, which is obviously fine. Okay. So, Sword Class Frigate is a classic combat ship design proven in thousands of battles, combining decent firepower, high speed, and respectable survivability. It is 1.6 kilometers in length, 0.3 kilometers of beam at the fins, approximately. Estimated tonnage is 6 megatons, and estimated number of souls is 26,000. There we go. New expedition smell probably smells like Ceramite and Suffering. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Reminds me of history cards. UK military three. I, I was very tempted to actually go with the um, Astra Militarum commander, but I just felt like Noble was, was was just more of a dick. So that's why I went with that. Um, so our results are: we are Lord Monstra Abundant, and you can see that we are uh, Imperial World Noble. We've got Grim Portents, Humanity's Finest, Fellowship, Feet of Greatness, and uh, those are our abilities there. And there are our skills, and there we are. Fantastic stuff. Right. So done. There we go. That's what we're doing. 
there were in the playtest there were different they were all the same classification of ships but they they did vary in look so i think you can get different different looks of ships i mean i don't think you're ever going to get like a battleship because those things are fucking rare anyway um, and i don't think a road trader not even a road trader would have the the income to have a battleship those things are like you know flagships of entire sectors Ship for a fancy lad. Oh, why did they give the servo skulls lawyer hat hair? What the fuck is that about? What what Imperium? What the fuck are you also? Why have you put lawyer hair with candles? That's just a fire hazard waiting to fucking happen. Enough contact in a few missions, impossible references. A battleship is possible. Well, maybe. Maybe. An excellent and place for contemplation. Yeah. One has the best view of the cathedral from here. Mesmerizing, wouldn't you say? An impeccable manifestation of the God Emperor sublimity. I didn't think they had I didn't think they had talking in this, but maybe they do. Is it is it all voiced? Holy shit. Uh Let's increase that, decrease that, and decrease that. Why are you warning me? You're fine. Right, let's try that. Okay. Um, what are we going to do? Do you have a particular reason for disturbing me? My apologies. I did not seek you out to pester you with unwanted attention. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. Kunrad Voitveer, Master of Whispers, in the employ of her ladyship rogue trader Theodora von Valencius. At your service. I haven't had the pleasure of speaking with you in person before. I have no intention of introducing myself. Mm -hmm. I am afraid I wouldn't be able to hide my familiarity with who you are and where you come from. No matter how respectful I try to be of you and your wishes. After all, it is my primary duty to be well informed. <laughs> Moreover, whatever bloodline name you used before, it no longer matters much. Oh yeah, sorry Lucifer, you literally just missed it. <laughs> um, is, the, is the voice volume okay? I will be frank with you. You may forget your past titles, no matter who gave them to you what their origins are. From the moment you and the other candidate were brought aboard this void ship, your fate changed. You now serve Lord Captain Theodora von Valencius and carry the burden of an heir of this house. Henceforth, you share your dynastic name with her ladyship. Bear it with honor. Um, tell me about the one whose ship I found myself. I would rather not discuss the Lord Captain behind her back. Especially not on board her ship. No one knows better than I that whispers are wont to attract particularly close attention. <laughs> oh, suffice it to say that a ladyship is the bearer of the sacred warrant of trade and a woman of immense power and entitlement. However privileged your position may be, I ask that you do not incur her anger by being disrespectful or obtuse. Lady Theodora despises both qualities. Unfortunately, I'm both of those things, so... <laughs> um, Lord Captain, a strange title for Lady Theodora. Such are the traditions of the Imperium. Lord Captain is the title that was established in the annals of the Lex Imperialis. At the time when the first rogue traders entered the Gold Emperor's service. And therefore, it is sacrosanct. Uh, why am I bought this vessel? Why have I been bought here? So that you may fulfill your blood duty. Whatever obligations you had before, they are henceforth null and void. By order of the Lord Captain, you have been requisitioned to serve the rogue trader Indeed, blessed by the God Emperor. 
Your former position may have been different from conventional service as part of one of the institutions of the Imperium. But from now on, a different fate awaits you. One chosen for you by the Lord Captain. I advise you to come to terms with this reality as quickly as possible. I assume you had some goal in mind when you decided to seek me out. Let us address it. But of course, I have come to invite you to a meeting with Lady Theodora. I imagine you have many questions for your patroness, and I'm sure she has just as many questions for you. It is regrettable that you haven't yet had an opportunity to speak. It has been an arduous voyage thus far. Drew your name from a hat. Congratulations. I've look. I've seen. Is it the Deathly Hat? No, not the Deathly Hallows. Which is the Harry Potter where he gets his name pulled out of a hat and then he gets almost killed? I've seen how that goes down. Fuck that. <laughs> Who is the God Emperor? <laughs> Who? Get shot. Didn't know you would live stream. This is a real treat. Ah, thank you, Aura. The Lord's Captain and Master Edelthrad von Valencius are conversing on the observation platform. Let us join them there. Uh, rogue trader Theodora von Valencius desires to personally meet the person recently brought aboard. Okay, follow Con. I can do that. I'm off. Do, do, do. <laughs> they will see. Oh, yes, indeed. They all will see. I can press a button. Fuck you. I'm rich. Conference where information is displayed on a large screen above the cogitators. You can make out references to unfamiliar systems and worlds among the numbers and logistar symbols. There will symbols. be no peace in my wake. A massive conference table, obviously crafted from real wood, a resource of incredible value aboard a void ship. Indeed. Hello? Lay people interfacing with the operation of the sacred mechanisms disturbs the machine spirits. In the name of the Omnissiah, refrain. From any further profane acts. No, I think you'll find I'm rich. Mm, what lies like. beyond? Oh, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, God, so pray. It's all, it's all, God, I really hate it when religion gets rammed down my throat. Hello. Hello, through the door? I can I'll open the door. Normally I have people to do that, but never mind. <laughs> God, that voice. Right? It was the worst one, one I could find. One of the Valencia's trophy rooms. Perhaps you would like to take a look around after your audience with the Lord Captain. Well, that's a tarantula turret. They've got a Lehman Rust there as well. What's happening? Run! The servicers have gone berserk! Oh, that's gonna sting. the fray we charge <laughs> right now it's a fight it's fine there he is it's changed from the early access oh shit it really changed from the early access normally those the before you had like some cat things to kill and they were a piece of piss okay movement in combat yeah 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 movement points yeah, yeah I, know. I know what do i got i've got a stub pistol okay what's the range on that uh, effective. It's a twelve. Uh, right. Well, first things first. You. What if? So you serve me now. And let's move up there, and we'll take a punt. I know. I know all about. Yeah. I know. I know. Go on, bugger off. And um, voice of command. What? Ha! No! Do I have to be next to them for voice of command? Tell tensor. Oh, maybe because I've already used one on him. <laughs> That's it. Kill the peon. I'm too precious to die. Don't fucking analyze him, kill him! Mm, how well 
predictable downfall. What suspiciously poor timing for such an accident. Indeed. Servitors malfunction on the officer's deck at exactly the same moment when the rogue trader and their heirs are gathered here. I have blocked all passages between the upper and lower sectors of the residential decks. If this is a deliberate attack, it should stop the culprits from advancing their plan. Now they're the guys with big guns are. I'm afraid I must remain here. For Lady Theodora's safety, I have to oversee the execution of these orders personally. I hope you will have no difficulty reaching the observation platform on your own. It is just at the end of this corridor. I mean, normally, again, I have people to carry me around to these kind of places. I can open a map by pressing M. Oh, so I can. Come on. Hello? Why is the server's head are still smouldering? What seemed the cause of my function was the short circuiting of the motivator force. Tarantula sentry gun constructed with the blessing of the Adeptus Mechanicus using a standard template construct, the Manufactorums of Kiava Gamma. Neiman Ross battle tank reclaimed and restored by the grace of the God Emperor, the first to breach the capital walls during the pacification of Vor Vortez Chaton. Patience! My nerves are frayed! Black shard resembling obsidian. If you look closer, you can discern a strange, barely perceptible glow inside the art necron. Calling it a violet halo, which upon closer examination turns out to be handcrafted objects, symbols carved with the primitive tools are visible upon the surface. I wish those tooltips lasted just a touch longer. One step at a time. Amidst Massive the golden ammo glam intersparked with sparkling particles. Now the stone on the petals are no doubt solid, but its surface shimmers and changes hue as if someone has captured a piece of turbulent sea within a rock. Well, these are all rocks, aren't they? A strange object that resembles sea coral. The porous surface is pitted, a sign that has been underwater. And a grey green crystal with white veins. A low hum can be heard coming from the artifact. Well, I'm assuming this is. Exhibit is unfinished. Another symbol of House von Valencius Valor that will be displayed here at some point in the future. Oh, that's nice. Necron Blackstone. Yeah. XCOM Warhammer Edition, pretty much. Got a Necron Scarab or something. I get the ship five minutes once that wakes up. Wait, is that a Soul Stone? Uh, not this one. Curiosity sings in my veins. Mm, I don't know. Or that one. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I don't think it's that important. Uh, right. Do -do -do. Oh, there will be no peace in my wake. Ah, oh, no voices. This is simply irrational, Lady Theodora, says the man dressed in a peculiar garb. His voice is tight with tension. His face, half of which is covered by sin skin, is twisted in a grimace of displeasure and disbelief. Assimil assimilation into the trade structure would be political and economic suicide, practically an admission of heresy. The tall grey-haired woman pins him with a gaze, her cybernetic eye flashing crimson, then suggests an alternative that will satisfy me. I have described the situation, no worse than my seneschal should have. Make a decision. What will I do with Aeon v 6 El Therad? Um, I'm here to speak with the Lord Captain. What is this? Eldrathad turns to you and regards you with indignation. Is there someone from the retinue, Theodora? Do you permit your people to interrupt your conversations in such a fashion? I give that permission to those with something of substance to say. Let's see if it is worth it. Theodora tilts her head. Her lips stretch into a cold smile. This is Lord Monstra Abundant, the second candidate for the title of my successor. The rogue trader regards you with a look that is imperious, predatory and oppressive. Step forward, Lord Monstra Abundant. Consider this hypothetical situation. Ion 6, a new world on the fringes, the Coronas Expanse, high seismic activity, regular magma eruptions, metamorphic rock deposits, prospects for a large-scale mining. The world is populated by natives who worship some heretical underworld spirits that protect those who offer them sacrifices. Flight of fancy, you might say, but attempts to install ore extractors have failed for the second time. The mining crews since the planet's surface simply vanished overnight. My question to you is, what would you do with this poison treasure? Passive skill test. Yeah, I know. 
So, those spirits could well be native names for dangerous aliens. I would first verify that indeed the case, and if populated of Aeon 6 engages in Xeno worship, uh, or alternatively, there are ways to... Con right, what would I do? I mean, I guess either of these are fairly good. Might cost several psychers to do so. Um, let's... let's z yeah, Xeno. Theodora Rage, the Red Arch is an eyebrow. Reasonable and prudent. However, chasing after ethereal creatures may prove a rather long and fruitless endeavour. Eldrathad scoffs. Apart from Xenos, an untrodden planet might be teeming with a midred horrors that are far more dangerous and difficult to eradicate. I suspect that you, Lord Monstra Abundant, are simply unaware of their existence. Um, I find your tone most disagreeable, Eldrathad. You will kindly alter the manner in which you address me, or else you will live to regret the cot. Sh um, yeah, that one. Tilts his head. Well, I find your company disagreeable, Lord Monster Abundant, and yet I am forced to endure such. Aldrathad. Theodora's tone renders him silent. I believe I gave you an assignment on the ship. Explain to me, then, why my senior congregator is still dawdling about the officer's deck instead of proceeding to the middle decks to commence the inspection of the compartments in his purview. I beg your forgiveness, Lady Theodora. Your presence has such profound effect to me that I well forgot the time. Eldrathad bows ceremoniously and takes his leave without sparing you another look. That's it. Sling your fucking hook, mate. Theodora's gaze follows him as he leaves, and then she turns to you. So, Lord Monster upon it, why are you here? Um... I do not know yet. I hope you will clarify that. Theodora smiles wryly. Clarity, a luxury that few of us can afford. There is a reason why I have not explained all the details of the question I posed to you earlier. Beyond the borders of the Imperium, seldom is one granted an opportunity to enjoy information in abundance. This, however, is one such opportunity. My name is Theodora von Valencius Massio Afscarus. Jesus Christ, back in the names. I am a rogue trader in the service of the God Emperor of Humanity, and my rights and freedoms are vindicated by the most sacred relic, the Warrant of Trade. Kept aboard this very vessel, mine is the honour to venture into the darkness beyond the Imperium and carry humanity's light to her powers, wicked and heretical reign, and bode death and ruin to us all. It is my decision alone to determine the fate of whatever I find past the bounds of the explored void. Every world I discover, along with all there is, to, there is to find therein resources, people, riches and mysteries, is mine by right. I command millions of lives, rule over numerous planets, and possess fortunes that no planetary governor or commander could ever dream of amassing. And you, Lord Monster Abundant, are one of those with the Von Valencius blood in their veins and a rightful claim to the inheritance when the hour comes. Um, I'm ready to take on this sacred purpose. Oh yes, you would, wouldn't you? The question is, am I ready to choose you over the rest? You came aboard hours before the warp jump and have not yet distinguished yourself in any way. As things currently stand, I have doubts that you are suitable for the role of rogue trader. Blood right alone is not enough to earn the high honour of becoming the bearer of the warrant of trade. Nonetheless, your abilities and talents may yet prove useful. If not for the role of Lord Captain, then for that of their closest ally. Theodora sighs and looks away pensively for a moment. Alas, even those responsibilities can at times be challenging for those who share your blood. Kunrad Voigtgevel served me for many years before he made his mistake. Uh, did I hear you correctly? The Master of Whispers is related to you. His kinship to me is most distant, as is yours. Nonetheless, he does bear the name Von Valencius, even if he avoids using it publicly, and as such, strictly speaking, can be considered my heir. That door, however, is closed to him. Voigtvis performance in his current role is satisfactory, or it used to be at least. Thank you for clarifying. May I ask my questions now? The vox affixed to Theodora's attire suddenly comes to life, but all you can hear is unintelligible noise. Theodora winces, shuts off the transmission, and gives you an imperious nod. I have some time before the navigator gives a signal to initiate the void ship's translation out of warp, and my presence is required on the bridge. Um, right, I'm not going to ask that because I know that. Servitors, don't care about that. Gracious Lord Captain, surely there are ways I can prove myself a worthy heir. You can start by not asking questions of that sort. I have no need for sycophants. I will draw my conclusions when opportunity proves is to prove yourself arises. As for when you will be granted that opportunity, only God, the God Emperor knows. What are my current responsibilities? Observe, learn, absorb. It will take time for you to find your bearings aboard the vessel and in your new position. Eventually, I will find a post that suits you, as I did for Eldrathad. Until that time comes, consider yourself my aid. 
Where is the ship headed? The Rykad system, the domain of rogue trader Winterscale, one of my peers and rivals. Only three rogue traders exist in the Cronus Expanse, and each of them possesses resources comparable to mine. Perhaps we will one day assist the House von Valencius in surpassing both of them in affluence and splendour. Imperious nod. What the hell is that? It's like a... Hmm. But imperiously. That's how it works. I have no more questions. In that case, I shall head to Theodora's Vox Awakens once more. This time you pick up shouting. The Lord Captain freezes, listening to the Vox cast, then nods and draws her weapon. Disturbance is reported on the adjacent deck. Seneschal, if the need arises, protect the new blood. She glances at you. It's possible you might have the chance to prove your worth. It may present itself sooner than you have anticipated. Uh-oh. It's all kicking off. Oh, it's the riffraff, the hobbledy hoys. They've all risen up. Uh, another annoyance. Spare none of them! Okay, start the battle. I think telling people to kill them and then running behind something heavy is uh, normally my job. I took care of this one. Good job, Abelard. Jesus Christ, Mort. Chill the fuck out. Blards. Fucking falls. Oh! You bastard! You almost shot me! You piece of shit. Um. You. Schemes within. You serve me. <laughs> Perfect. Um. Good. Yeah, we're gonna get behind cover. Fuck you. Let's see. Ah! Another one is shattered. Okay, can I do voice of command? Even you? I won't do that. No, is that okay? So, I don't know. Maybe it's I because I am powerless to act. Why now? Why can't I use that? What is the reason? It costs one AP. One friendly creature within ten cell radius. Tiny short moment. Maybe I need a line of sight? Hmm. Not 100% sure. I'm sure we'll work it out. Ed L. Thrads. Ed L. Thrads. Ah, that's close enough. Look, I'm rich and powerful. I can't go around remembering what people's names are all the time. It's not just, it's just not how I fucking, fucking roll. Ah! Ow! That was my skin. Oh, this will leave a scar. I mean, I don't think it will. I think we'll be vaporized. Just a minor setback. Literally vaporized the fuckers. One fewer it's me with my fucking stuff gun. I'm helping. Can I what? Do this? <laughs> no. Why can't I? Okay, tell you what. If you go there, got it. Even I won't do that. I don't quite understand. I don't quite understand why I can't use it. Okay, it's a 34% chance. That's not very good. I mean... A genius. Shoot me. I'm too rich to die. Used to dust. Maybe it's a glitch. I don't know. I don't know. Genuinely don't know. Not sure. I used it before, so there must be a reason why I can't use it. It might be because they're not in my team, they're just allied characters, so. Mm. Theodora waves her hand at a commanding gesture. Mort, take a team with you and clear a path to transport lines. Do not let a single horse son survive. The road trader turns her eyes to you. Didn't bat an eye when the scum bursts onto deck. Hmm, not bad. I've seen many an officer who panicked at the sight of combat on the upper decks. The false sense of security offered by the position makes them that much more vulnerable in the harsh realities of the warp travel. The warp of warp travel. She looks at the Vox in her hand. All you hear is life is static. What are your orders? She breaks all eye contact with you. Mort has gone on ahead to clear a path for us. If you want to make yourself useful, go after him and see if the arch militant requires aid and be quick about it. Do, do, do. 
What lies beyond? I don't think we can actually equip anything at the moment, so no point worrying too much about it. Let's carry on. In this tapestry of a world, I am the rogue thread. Mort's just fucking icing people. Yeah, like, I mean, I did use it before, but I don't know. I'm sure, I'm sure I'll work out why. Thank Providence you are alive and well. Always on time, eh, Conrad? The moment we finish chasing the riffraff around the deck, you shot. Always just after the fighting's done, you could set your chrono by it. Conrad pointedly looks away from the arch militant to you. Mort, pull yourself together. The arch militant looks back at you. What? Did the Art Lord Captain send you to chivy us along? We're all done here. I'll report right away. Mort pulls his Vox from his belt and hurry reports on the situation. Master of Whispers, what is happening on my ship? The Vox net is silent, the Vox Master is not responding. Armed assailants have stormed the officer's deck, and my arch militant just destroyed several more heretics on the way here. Is this a case of warp madness? Have some of my crew lost their minds and forgotten who they are and whom they serve? Reports. I have not yet received word from the Engineerium regarding any Gele field failures. But communications were already unstable half an hour ago, and now they have ceased altogether. Whatever the cause may be, the consequences are spreading fast. I'm receiving scattered reports from the middle decks, and the only Vox cars from the lower bays are one-way heretical gibberish. The map and have already reached the officer's deck suggest that this, outra this outrage was planned in advance. Perhaps it's an organised mutiny. Um... A mutiny against the Emperor's anointed? Execute the traitors, every last one of them. First, we have to confirm that the bridge and the navigator's sanctum are secure, and I have the means to do both things at once. Her expression changes as our eyes flash ominously. Theodora looks to Voigtver. El... Ed... Hang on. Edel Thorad? Edel Thorad, where is he? I must know if he is unharmed. A psycho aboard a ship that is potentially being assailed by the warp could pose a greater threat to himself and others than the whole army of madmen with improvised weapons. I tried to locate him, but the last thing known about his movements is that he arrived on transitional deck 18. Blast it. Master of Whispers, find Edelthrad immediately. Seneschal, locate Talas and the Sister of Battle. Both are to remain at my side. Arch Militant with me. I must go to my study. It appears we might encounter heretics along the way. Lord Monster Abundant. Theodora glanced at you thoughtfully. If I may, Lord Captain. Voigtver's voice is soft and cautious. Transitional Deck 18 is at the heart of the disturbance, and if our goal is to bring Edelthrad back, I could use some support. After all, I am not as nearly as adept as directly confronting enemies of the house as the esteemed Arch Militant, and taking into consideration Edelthrad's psychic powers... Then it's settled. Lord Monster Abundant, find... Edelthrad and bring him here, in whatever state you find him. This elevator, she points to the massive doors, leads to a restricted compartment, such as my personal chambers and the bridge. Do not let me down, I require you both, do you understand? I cannot promise that I won't lose our dearest heir somewhere along the way. Theodora shakes her head. Conrad, keep an eye on our spirited guest, you are personally responsible, Mort. Not responsible. Mort! That was a full stop there. That's it. Got a melter. They got a melter. I want a fucking melter, baby. Just between you and me, I think you suck. Uh, gives you a nod. Are you ready to head to 18? It's a long walk. You don't even have proper gear. Uh, I have a proposition. Since I'm the most important person here, you go in the front to shield me from potential threats. He smiles faintly. Certainly. Lord Theodora would be devastated if she were to lose one of her precious heirs. But that is no longer relevant. With a pop and a sharp crackle, something hits you in the abdomen and you are consumed by unbearable, gut-wrenching pain. I promised you a special destiny, Lord Monster Abundant. It is time to fulfil it. Oh, that bastard. He's played me like a fiddle. 80% reading, 20% stretch, okay, play. <laughs> 
Yeah, I will say that the the sort of like beginning bit is is very talky. There's there's certainly some very talky bits in this game. Um, but the combat is is satisfying. I do like it. It's not afraid to throw you into combat as well. It does it quite often. Careful, careful. Be gentle with our guest. He has an important mission to complete during our visit to the Warren Chamber. And for that, I need him breathing. Oh, you are back with us, I see. Delightful. What is the meaning of this? You must have hit your head harder than I thought. No matter. Very little is required of you. Just your blood. Which you can either share of your own volition, or I will spill it for you. We are in the anteroom of the War in Chamber, this void ship's most hallowed vault. There, beyond those gates, lies the relic that gives Theodora all of her power. The sacred Warrend of Trade. Only one obstacle remains on my path to obtaining it. The gates of the chamber are guarded by the Sentinel, an ancient device that will only open the door to a true heir of the dynasty. I expected to do this part myself, but never mind. You will offer your blood to the Sentinel. What is it? Inbred? Your blood too thin for the Sentinel? On the contrary, the Warp's blessing has raised me too much above your kind, Fon Valencius. The Sentinel refused to submit to me, but you can help. Heresy. After all, isn't that what family is for? Why are you doing this? Why? Because I am following an order. What is happening on this ship right now has been in the making for a very long time. All that remains is to obtain what my master sent me for. The warrant of trade. I have no intention of helping you. I am afraid that you have no choice in the matter. Try to resist, and I will demonstrate the power that the warp holds over mortals. Come to think of it, I might even take some pleasure in doing so. He is already yep, yeah, he's a he's a super chaos boy. Um to the void with you. Uh skill test. The blade flashes in the dim light and drops of blood appear in your palm. For a brief moment you feel nauseous and your head is spinning, and then quiet whispers begin to flood your mind. More and more sourceless voices echo each other, drowning out your own thoughts, replacing them with a singular urge. Go to the gate. Go to the gate. Fight the voice in your head. Get out, I'm not your puppet. The voice in your head giggle and mock your desperate outcry. You feel the intruding influence forcing you to your feet and making you take a step forward. Onward, the gate loom in the centre of the chamber. In the gate archway, you see a cogitator with a human likeness built into the front panel. As you approach, the torso twitches slightly. This is a servitor, an obedient automaton, created from a lobotomized human being, because that's the best thing the Imperium can think to do. The Sentinel turns its head to you, one of its eye sockets lighting up with two ember-like irises. Here you go. Um, look for anything that could be used as a weapon. You look around in hopes of finding at least something that could work as a weapon. Your search is in vain. The chamber anteroom is completely empty and in perfect working condition. Nary a broken panel or a protruding piece of rebar in sight. Uh, examine the device. Tech use. Test succeeded. You carefully inspect the design of the gate cogitator. What immediately catches your eye is a strange alloy that was used as material for the machine's components, some of which are unfamiliar to you. You suspect there might be some kind of archaeotech relic. In case anyone doesn't know, Architect is basically stuff the Imperium can't build anymore. The servitor on the gate begins to move. With the screeching and groaning of metal, it leans forward closer to you. Its lower jaw opens with a drawn-out shriek, much wider than the jaw of a living human could. The servitor's mouth is filled with sharp metallic fangs that glint in the dim light. The vid screen to the right of you lights up, showing strings of mysterious symbols. Is this seriously the... It's a fucking blood test. What? Why does it have to be so fucking horrible? <laughs> A whisper runs through your consciousness, insisting, demanding sacrifice. The voices that filled your head after Voigetvir wounded you with his blade did not go away. 
On the contrary, their source coiled itself into a tight knot somewhere in the depths of your mind. Uh, examine the sentinel. The servitor looks noticeably different from the ones you, have, you are used to. Its skin is covered, stitched together with copper thread, and it has metal hinges in place of standard joints. It seems to be that the creator of the sentinels did everything to ensure the service life of this unit would be much longer than that of an ordinary automaton. Uh, I don't know. Place your hand in sentinels more. The sentinels' jaws clamp around your hand, puncturing your skin and sinking into your flesh. A few dark droplets fall into the servitor's throat, and immediately you hear thumbing as the servo motors start up and pump stir into motion. The big screen of the cogitator flickers. Imperium, that's why. <laughs> Several long minutes pass, the sentinel's jaws remain closed and you're beginning to feel sick. Perhaps if you were to lean against the gate, you could catch your breath. Maybe even close your eyes and present none of this ever hurt. <laughs> High levels of caustic humours. The subject is in a state of heightened stress. Do you require assistance? You don't understand where this quiet voice is coming from, crackling like static. It is a sentinel? The cogitator? Is it a figment of your weary mind? Whatever it is, you can clearly hear every single word. Yes, uh, yes, I do require assistance. Pain shoots through your head and subsides just as quickly. It would seem the entity coiled in your consciousness does not have the ability to do you any real harm. Request accepted. Initiating defense protocol. Suck a dick, motherfuckers! Well, there is still another way. with some strong event horizon vibes i love it yay i did it i'm a fucking genius Patience. Oh, well done, my nerves are frayed yeah tell me about it fuck me that's the warrant of trade i don't think if i can fucking write that jesus let it be known that by my will and the true words of this document i appoint this person to be the bearer of the warrant of trade and bestow upon them blah 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 something 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 a broken diversity what broken whatever. you get the idea escort the child of the house to safety i need to contact someone preferably theodora Voxcast frequencies disrupted. Initiating setup. Establishing connection. In place of the mechanical screeching, the Servo Skull's Vox projects the voice of Theodora, Theodora von Valencius, distorted and ridden with static, yet still recognisable beyond a doubt. Vox Master, restore communications with the Navigator Sanctum. I'm trying to contact the bridge. If anyone can hear me on this frequency, regroup all available forces and head to the upper decks at once. I repeat, regroup all available forces and head... Communication protocols breached. Signal latency assessment unavailable. Unable to establish two-way connection. I need a weapon. I'm utterly defenseless. Distance from the current location to the nearest arsenal. Initiating situational calculations. Service skull goes silent. Its relays clicking. Seconds after second pass, and you realize the service skull will not answer you. What madness is happening here? Who are you? Who addresses me? Temporary obnubilation following acute stress. Mobile unit of the Warren Sentinel standing by. The do you the Warren Sentinel? Mobile unit of the Warren Sentinel designed as a personal escort of the child of the house and a means of communicating with the rogue trader's subjects. Mobile unit standing by. Lead me away from here. Middle and upper decks. Assuming the probability of safe placement in areas of concentration of armed units. Calculating. To prevent unauthorized units from breaching the warrant chamber, preemptive sealing must be initiated. The mobile unit will start executing the received order immediately after the safety of the warrant is secured. Blah blah blah, journal. Yeah. Got it. Got it. I got it. I got oh, it. one step at a time amidst the madness. Press the door, and the enormous gates match the importance of the thing. They protect the massive doors are made of heavy metal and look impregnable. Seal the warrant chamber. Master! What? Whatever are you doing in the warrant chamber? How did you... Throne, preserve me! What is the meaning of this? 
Conrad is a traitor. We parted ways and the officer's deck. He stunned me somehow and brought me here. What? He intended to take revenge on Theodora for something and trying to reach the warrant was somehow part of the plan. Oh, oh holy. Holy God, God Emperor. Emperor. I presume he is the one responsible for the mutiny. Bandmaster, I wish to remind you that you are to refer to the Lord Captain as Lady Theodora. Um, I'm... Mm, for Miss Seneschal, you're asking too many questions. I would be glad to follow formal protocol, Master. But I am obliged by the circumstances to view this situation as an extraordinary one. And therefore, one that permits deviations from our accustomed procedures. Mm, you're in a bad way. I can treat your wounds. I have a Medicaid kit with me. And for the love of the throne, now is not a good time to be walking around the decks without means of self-defense. Here. He hands you open. Yeah, okay. So, la, la, la. Right, give it that a second. Right, okay, here we go. Okay, so we're going to give ourselves gun swords, little body suit there. And now we can't equip that because we don't have any of those. So, but we can equip that on you. You've already got one. And then we can. They what will advice see. do you see? Oh, yes. Yeah, they all will see. To Come the here. ordinary, I am an enigma. We are the spearhead of the Imperium. Oh, your efforts. That is a noticeable improvement. Now you're prepared for the trials ahead. The lower decks are teeming with heretics, instigating the rabble to revolt. But that is the least of our problems. The ship's enforcers are rounding up the scoundrels and suppressing the resistance. The situation on the middle decks is much worse, although strike teams have already been dispatched there. All communication with the bridge and the engineering bay was lost. So, apart from scattered voxcasts, we have no information to go on. But that is not the worst of it. All these jolts and shaking are most alarming. These are signs that the navigator and the master helmsman are having difficulty translating the ship out of the wall and into real space. I fear that they may have already lost control. We must reach the Navigator's Sanctum and get a handle on the situation. If we can manage that, some of all this vessel may yet survive. Uh, what exactly has gone wrong with the translation? I am no helmsman. Oh, God Emperor, preserve me, Navigator. However, I have spent my entire life aboard void ships equipped with warp drives, and I know that portents such as these do not bode well. It could be that the Geller field has faltered. Perhaps the Navigator was struck down by warp corruption and is fighting for the last shreds of his humanity as we speak. Oh, sorry. If we get thrown off course, we will be forever lost in the war. Naturally, we would likely not have long to live in that scenario. But I will not resign myself to such an outcome just yet. Um, how did you find me? You sent me a Vox message. Specifically, a Vox cast on the officer's frequency, which I had the good fortune to receive. You mean to say you did no such thing? I think the Warrant Sentinel may have sent that message. It appeared when I opened the chamber. Warrant Sentinel? The Lord Captain barely ever ventures down to the chamber, and I was at her side only once or twice when she did. And I did not see anything of the sort. The Warren Chamber is an ancient and rather sacred mechanism that the ship's tech priests treat with the utmost reverence. I assume that whatever it is that you did, you must have activated certain processes and caused the Sentinel to awaken. But then, why did none of it happen when Lady Theodora did the same? Well, probably because she wasn't, like, under threat and it detected that I was under threat and then decided to, you know, set people on fire, which is pretty neat. Um, I heard one of Theodora's voxcasts. Lady Theodora's. Which one? The last one I received was about the Navigator's Sanctum, and that was a good while ago. In any case, let us hope that the Lord Captain is well and safely in charge of the ship's defense. In the meantime, we must do all we can to prevent the ship from veering off course. 
Navigate his sanctum. Very well. Will you lead the way? Absolutely. Let us proceed. A wave of static suddenly erupts from the servo skull and you can make out Theodora's words through the noise. To arms, loyal sons and daughters of the god emperor, fight the heresy and corruption that threatens to consume our home and with all your might destroy those who have dared. The Lord Captain is calling her crew to battle. Which means the Vox networks are set up for broadcast transmission, not message exchange. Splendid. While the rogue trader inspires proper resolve to fight in her subjects, you and I shall prove that her trust in us is well deserved. Onward. No, no. Friends. Don't you dare to cross us. Are you ready to die? Uh, well, I mean... Okay, I'm going to stand behind you. That's it. Hit him, not me. I'm too rich and important to die. Uh, right, so... Voice of command. I can, like... What if... Schemes within schemes. Neat. Okay, I'm going to then... Just... Let's see. Ooh. I booped you. Good job. Well done. Yes, 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 yes. Cleave. That's the one we want. At your beck and call. The more, the better. Yes, 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 yes. Don't, don't. don't get yourself too worked up. Uh, I guess we go for you. I will do my duty. Parry? Lame. Okay, I guess you can brace for impact. It will be done. Good job. Secretly had a blood bag to open every time. Oh. Who wants some more? Maybe. We can't rule it out. Okay, I'm gonna move you over here. Then I can I'm powerless to act. Oh you can't use it on the same person. Okay, that's fine. Oh don't. Um Abelard tried to dodge. A genius. I'm gonna be honest, I always skip the shooting lessons. They were always rather boring. Tried and tested tactics are the best ones. Choppy chop chop. I took care of this one. Oh, we level up. That's a win. That's a win. Can I remember how to level up? There we go. Um, that one. Right. So we just do choose a skill. So we're going to go with... Oh, I'm tempted to go for commerce. Maybe persuasion? I mean, they're all pretty high anyway. Uh, I'm going to go for... I'm gonna go for coercion. Is that right? So I've done pick that here. Oh there we go, complete. Um, I'm tempted to make, because you really are going to be... Oh, you're Medicaid. Well, hmm. That would give you another 10. You could be our heel boy. Do you want to be our heel boy? I want to give you athletics, though. But the you're, I mean, you're probably going to beef up your strength, so I'm going to save that one. Let's go with that one. Right, what are you equipped with, just out of interest? Oh, heretical. Dogmatic. Iconoclasts. Sometimes um, you consult the appropriate treaties on Tactica Imperialis and well, weigh every step. Sometimes, yeah, though, you just fire your biggest cannon and save the day. Okay, you've just got a chainsaw, so... Is there anyone? What do we got here? 
yeah, yeah. Okay, we've got a last pistol. We're going to keep that and the rest of the sword can go to cargo. And this is right. So you've got a stub revolver. That's seven to eleven damage. That's six to eight damage. It's got a dodge reduction though, so it's more likely to hit. It's got more armor penetration as well. Oh, is, is that better? I don't think it is. I might give that to I might give that to you, just to like just so you have a gun, just in case. Okay, good job everyone. Mm, Off we go. What lies beyond? <sighs> Wonder why I say it's Law Imperium, um, because there's yeah, there's different types of law. There's Law, Xeno, Law Warp, different sort of thing. No one plays Arthur Mike's Tale. Arthur, the new patch says they patched the fun out of it. Oh dear, that's not good. Perhaps the blood is thicker than that of Lady Dora. I mean, you're a true ruler of the house by right of blood. Oh, maybe. I'd like to think so. I am fancy. Put my fancy pants on. The Navigator Sanctum is directly along the passageway. And so, he will enter the halls of the Blinded Guide and witness the radiance of the final dawn through the cracks and fall victim to a whim of fate. Master, watch your head. Idira, would it be too much to ask that you phrase your soothsayings plainly for once? That was too close. <laughs> Sorry, old man. The voices are so loud, I can't even hear myself. They shriek, they sing, they... Oh, Abelard, how they sing! Looks like you... pay to be able to get the wolf chapter space screen, but who knows? I don't know, I thought it was just one of the followers. This is Idira Tlas, personal psyker and diviner of her ladyship Theodora von Falensis. Idira? <coughs> I'm not drunk, old man. I'm suffering the effects of the warp that is seeping through these walls. I see the ship's fate. To die in the waves of the immaterium, fall under the burning rays of the final dawn. And in the roaring blaze, I see a figure standing. Who is it? I have no answer. The into your consciousness shrinks and crawls in deeper, its claws scraping against the walls of your mind as if in the presence trying to hide from the steer standing before you. A diviner, are you? The voices from beyond the threshold whisper to me. Sometimes their murmurs are clear, they grant insight. Sometimes they drive me mad. But I am patient. I know how to listen <laughs> and discern. But now, with this clamor around me, too many voices, too loud. And you, you are Fon Valancius, one of Lady Theodora's heirs. Well then, <laughs> we finally meet. Hello, Daffy. I like how Al can't keep the voices act, acting hidden for the most part. I, mean, I wouldn't mind if it was all voice acted, but it's fine. It's my night. Are we, are we still Lord Melchit? I've gone for like a, a jerk of a noble, so pretty close. Uh, you hear a few clicks from the relays of the Servo Skull, which has followed you all the way here, and Theodora's scrambled words give way to a voice vaguely familiar to you. Officer's frequency. To all who can hear me, those with a weapon in their hands are to gather on the officer's deck at once. I repeat, gather on the officer's deck at once and prepare to launch a counterattack. That settles that. Oh, Emperor's providence. The other air lives as well. Quickly, we must head to... Not so fast, old man. If we drown in the warp, Lady Theodora's heirs won't be any good to us. If Edelstrad's like me and hasn't yet surrendered his mind or body to the mercy of the warp, then he can still hold on a little longer without us. Blast it. You're right. First, we need to deal with what is happening here. 
How do you know who I am? What? You think Lady Theodora didn't ask me to peek into the darkness behind the backs of those she sees as her prospective heirs? <laughs> I have seen you. I have seen the footsteps of your past and the wounds of your heart. To see his words dredge up something dark and frightening from the depths of your memory. Your soul has been tainted by the influence of warp sorcery and it seems you will never be rid of it. What are you doing here? <laughs> the whispers called me. The ones I could Such make out among vengeance. all the screams and screeches. Those who are rocking this boat hit us where it hurt. They went after the navigator, our guide through the warp. Other whispers called me to the engineerium, but it was too late. I heard the cry of our master Cog, and the silence that followed. Oh, rough. What? You don't mean the engine say Prime is... Said, without a doubt. <laughs> and the voices wail, heralding countless nightmares, cackling at each soul among the hundreds that are now joining the warp. The shriek from the Navigator's sanctum was louder than the rest. <laughs> and it's better that we saved the Navigator than some lever puller from a cooling module or a cook from the middle decks. We must save the Navigator as well. Oh no. No, 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 no. Nothing is well about him. Can't you feel the chill crawling on your skin? The eyes watching you? The warp ice has already encased the bulkheads. What follows is calamity. <laughs> there do seem to be tentacles, so... But we're not just going to stand here and take it, are we? The state of things in here suggests there's a navigator around. Maybe one who's crippled or at death's door, but still kicking. And since our skin hasn't peeled off our faces just yet, his third eye must be closed. At worst, it's a little roughed up. So what are we moping around for? Let's go protect that noble mutant while we're still alive. Alcabarazes. Hello. Sounds a bit crazy. No, oh, she's definitely fucking bonkers. The Dawn of War Psyker. <laughs> she's a sanctioned Psyker and Soothsayer nonetheless. She is. She is sanctioned. Yeah, I know. I know what I'm doing. Party control. I know. I, I know how to control a party. I mean, I'll never get invited to one, but I know how to control one. Destroy this field. Don't keep our master waiting. Yeah, Curiosity! The Emperor is with us! Ah! Put me into cover. Uh, you... Hype there. Okay, Idira. Idira is a psychic operative. As an operative, you can study opponents and identify their weaknesses, and a psychic ability is allowed to deal damage to them. Analyze enemies as an operative, operative's ability, which applies exploit effect to all enemies within the oper operative's line of sight at the start of each of the operative's turns. The operative can use this ability against a specific enemy to inflict several stacks. Effect: the higher the operative's intelligence bonus, the more exploit stacks will be inflicted. Uh, hits a target with an exploit applied to the attack deals additional damage. The amount of extra damage depends on the target's number of exploit stacks and the operative's perception. It's an operative ability which is a single which is under the. Okay, quite fine. So basically, s stack that shit. Okay, alright, alright, alright. It's all fine. It's all fine. Right. Okay. So, can we. Frying tonight! Bing on! Well, that was shocking. What? Was that you? I'm going or... to analyze him. What's he up to? What's he doing? What's his 911? Can I fall back now? Nah, you're alright. Okay, it depends on your intended actions. Okay, so tell me. Okay, so let's go voice of commands. What if? Abelard, do shit. Let's see. And I'm gonna a wicked thought. Come up a storm. Ah, another one is shattered. 
He didn't need his spine. Oh shit, you can't reach anyone. Uh, you... Oh, I'll tell you what, if you go here... Then you can charge. Your back and call. Chop, 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 chop. Oof, that sounded moist. And then I can shoot you. <laughs> Wasn't the girl uns- Oh, maybe she is unsanctioned. What tier is the Psyker? Good question, not sure. I can check. On this stuff. The creature in the chair appears as it has become one with its throne. You see pink parchment-like skin stretched between the seat and the limbs that have too many joints for a normal human being. The navigator is breathing heavily and the air whistling as it exits two dark gill-like slits on its cheeks. The creature's eyes are shut, the two ordinary eyes as well as the third one that sits in the centre of its forehead. No? I believe Master Vespidius still lives. Abelard flinches at the sight of the stretched skin and the dark marks on the face of the creature. The servants are dead, but the chamber, thank the Emperor, is still sealed from the warp. Well, we have a chance of leaving this place alive. Um, hey, are you alive? Navigator stirs, barely able to lift his head and half open his normal eyes. A dark drop rolls from under the closed lid of a third eye and down his face, leaving behind a black trail. Your time is short. The voice is coming the Vox grill at the base of the bizarre chair. It's unclear how the navigator is able to produce human speech. Our time is short to do what? Suddenly the navigator's body th starts thrashing in place. It lurches forward then falls back into the seat. The thrusts forward again as the bones crack and its skin tears open. However, the fusion between the body and the chair appears to be stronger than though the wild impetus is. The mutant remains seated, but leans as far forward as he can, his layered raiment so he turning crimson. The gill slits burst open, forming two hideous, screaming mouth-like pits. Fall to your knees, mortals, and behold the final dawn. Idira shrieks in terror. It came from beyond. His body is not his. Idira's scream is echoed by the silent cries in your head. The unseen creatures triumph at the sight of the navigator, succumbing to the paroxysms of the corruption. Its march thunders under the barren uh, burden of hope. Unseal your hearts and it will flood your souls with the midrids of words and meanings, each one a portent of salvation within me. The navigator continues to convulse violently in his seat, shrieking and cackling, but his fits then stop abruptly. His face is drenched in black and crimson. The dark ooze from under his third eyelid has turned from a trickle into a stream mixed with the blood coming from his nose, and there is a purplish swelling around the eye. That can't be good. No, probably not. Run. Flee from this place while I still have the strength. The words come from the Vox as a laboured rattle. I can contain the intrusion, but not for long. We must begin the translation. Leave the warp, but it can't be done without the Master Helmsman's help. Um, address Apple up. The navigator's still alive, barely so. What do we do now? The Seneschal gazes at the figure in the chair. The ship can only begin the translation with the assistance of the Master Helmsman if he is still alive. It is worth a try. We must get to the bridge, but we will need support. Our only option is to fight our way to the officer's deck and join forces with... That guy. And his people. I believe we will also find Le 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 Lady Theodora there. She must have heard the call to arms. <laughs> Her blood is having a stroke. The servo skull relate to us earlier. Idira reaches her hand out towards the navigator but pulls it back at the last moment. Vespidius, good luck and thank you. The navigator does not give a response. Black tears mixed with blood are streaming from under the closed eyelids and the vox at the base of the chair is bellowing out static interspaced with distant echoes of otherworldly laughter. Well, that can't be good. Patience! My nerves are frayed! We got psychic staff, an axe, scrappy auto gun. It's an auto gun, but it's got balls. I'll take him all. Fuck it. Fuck it. Did I uh, mention that my whispers tell me jokes? Jokes that, once said aloud, make your eyes bleed and blood curdle. So, <laughs> Talk about black comedy. Yeah, like Jethro then. Um, right, so... What skills do you have? Can I see... Ah, it's pretty small, isn't it? There we go. Features. Archetype. You are indeed an unsanctioned psyker. Uh, all psychic power used by the character have a 5% chance to trickle perils of the warp, and are resolved that the psyker's psy rating was one higher than normal. So I believe. Uh, does she have. 
you take no, not that one. Features? Hmm. I think some of it will tell you what. Because they do have like a psi level, and I'm not entirely sure. Forsaken World. Interesting, because th that's a home world and origin that you can't get as the player. It's different. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I I'm assuming she's like Psy level one. Oh, there we go. Psy rating one. There you go. Uh, base level zero. Unsanctioned Psyker one. Hello. What have you got? Uh, you have a scrappy auto gun and axe. I'm going to dump those into cargo. Right, what does a scrappy auto gun do? It is three to five. It's fucking awful. Like it's. It's shit. It's shit. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It's trash. Off One we go. One step at a time, amidst the madness. <laughs> uh, officer's deck. That's where the party's happening. Where we can find Agenta, the best character. Always pick up Psy level when available. Yeah, so you can you can level it up by getting by getting skills basically. Serpentine, serpentine. Ah, oh, he didn't serpentine. He's he's Stark boyed it. Turns it straight. The white haired warrior turns to face you, her dark eyes blazing. The weapon quivers in her hands, and for a brief moment, it seems like she's not going to stop and will instead continue eliminating every target she sees, starting with you. Sister Argenta! Sister Argenta, it is a relief to see you. We require all the forces we can muster. Your face, it is unfamiliar. Who are you? Um. And just for you to be so brazen about your inquiries. <laughs> First time I've seen anybody on this ship talk to the little sister like that. Allow me, Sister Argenta, sacred warrior of the Adeptus Sororitas. Sister, this is Master Fon Valancius, a member of the Rogue Trader's House. The hour is dark and daunting. The ship abounds with corruption. The faces of friends who are twisted by smears of heresy. The eyes of comrades ignite with the archenemy's hunger. I will do what I must to halt the advance of the dark forces. But in these dire moments, little can be trusted. So I must know, why are you here? Sister, I beg of you. Now is not the time for interrogations. The ship is under attack by heretics. We've been betrayed by our esteemed Master of Whispers. Edelthrad the heir is waiting for our aid, and Lord Captain Theodora is expecting a report on our success. We are here to deal with the situation. So I suggest we all do just that. Do not even think to insinuate that I'm one of the traitors. I will not let such an affront slide. That answer does you credit. Only the truly righteous would be so provoked by the accusation of heresy. I cannot wait to rain righteous fire down upon each and every heretic! What is a warrior of the Adeptus Sororitas doing aboard a rogue trader ship? Your order serves the Ecclesiarchy, do they not? Sister Argenta is a guest of the Lord Captain. And that story deserves its own time and conversation. Under more appropriate circumstances. Enough idle chatter. I am where I must be, and that will suffice. Who are these people with you? Overseer of Middle Deck AL84, my lord. 
We were rounding up everyone we could find in the attack compartments when we ran into an ambush. Just about every enforcer fell. These are the survivors. What is happening on the officer's deck? Massacre, my lord. And heretics are not just killing the crew. Some kind of blight is sweeping through the decks, filling the air. I saw people going mad the moment they breathed it in, screaming about their dead comrades, tearing out their eyes. I implore you, my lord, be on your guard. We must get to the main hall of the deck. Through this door, I shall join you, for it is my duty to the God Emperor to destroy this heresy. We will follow. For now, we will hold off any heretics who might try to crawl in through the cracks to join the main assault. And we'll take a look at the generators while we're at it. Those villains made a mess of the cables. Oh, I wish we had a Tector map with us, but we'll see what we can do without one. Good to hear it. Sister? Ready. May Terra's light illuminate our path through fire and darkness. Let's roll. Oh, good. We got low capacity fuel tank, a well maintained stop revolver. Well, it's definitely going to be better than what we got. Ah, uh, it's all stuck going to be just. Yeah, collect all. There we go. Uh, yes, I'm fully aware of how to equip shit. Thank you very much. Now, uh, let's give myself a. A better stub gun. <laughs> they will see. Oh, yes, indeed. They all will see. In we go. Hello, boys. In this tapestry no of the world, I am the rogue friend. Hmm, do what? You go there. You go there. You go there. Start the battle. <laughs> ah, he's fine. Frying tonight. Just a little bit of um, veil degradation. It's probably fine. Analyze enemies. Forewarning. Uh, tell you what, if we On it. if we forewarn Abelard because he is right in the middle of you know people trying to kill him, and but of I will analyze you, I guess. No! Suck a dick. How dare you! Okay. Uh, Abelard, try and dodge. Not to escape the Emperor's judgment. And what what we've got to love? What can we do? So this can be used. This grants for mention equal to six. Two minutes for each enemy that is either in a fire zone or is hit by her this turn. Okay, well we don't need to worry about it. We can run and gun. And run and gun basically means you can take another shot. Which you missed. I know what cover is. Let's see. Okay, do that. Schemes within the schemes. We'll do that. And then shooty shoot shoot. <coughs> Alright. I mean could be better. <laughs> I've suffered worse. He's fine. Victory is imminent. Ah! Oh, more friends. Is that a corpse? No, no it's um, it's a ship. It's uh, you can. I will do my duty. You charge over there. He'll be in some semblance of cover. Well, he should be harder to shoot. It's something. Ugh, just a minor setback. Oh, ruffians. Honestly, that really is too much. Uh, if I move you over here... What's this? Psychic Shriek. Nah, I'm gonna fucking 
fry the motherfuckers. Sweet. Uh, I don't really... Yeah, I'm just going to give Abelard... Abelard's got all the fucking buffs. What does he have? He's got... So he's got an extra 10% increase. He's got... His characteristics are another 15. 15 for one round. Shut that's a lot. That is so much. 15 extra characteristics across the board. Fuck me. No wonder no one could fucking hit him. Well, it's because because I've got so much... So my character's a noble, and because he's a noble, I can basically go, yeah, you do what I want you to, and that gives Abelard buffs. But because my fellowship is high, so high, he's getting, like, massive increases in his stats, and it's uh, fucking legit. Shooty, shoot, shoot. Strike is a threat. I mean, yes. Oh, it's got one. Oh, they've given it a cooldown. You used to be able to use it every single turn. It was fucking insane. I'm not surprised they. It basically meant you could shoot twice a turn, and you would just like chew through everyone. It was great. But um, yeah, totally understandable why. They kind of tone it down a little bit. <laughs> it was literally a case of, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna mow through. It was definitely the best skill in the game. Uh, I'm a gonna shoot. Wicked thought. Was that on purpose? He, no. No, that was just shit. Abelard's gonna be basically impossible to shoot. Uh, right, we. I've seen worse battles than this in my time. Nope, don't do that one. Just chop. It will be done. Indeed. Okay, can't hit him, but you're right up in his face, which means he won't be able to. Uh... Oh, I need you, need you in cover, really. Hmm. 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 I'm not so sure. Anything Just is. Psychic scream, yeah. Farewell. Blow his brain up. He doesn't need a brain. You're right. It's very noisy. Rejoice in battle! Missed. I'll do it. Faith without deeds is worthless. Oh, come on, sister. Well, at least he missed as well. Oh, I'm going to have to move. I'm going to have to move up. Do, do, do. Right. I won't sully myself with that. A genius at work. Bloody, bloody assholes in cover. It's the best right hand. He really is. He's such a. He's an absolute fucking boss. A tactically sound approach. It will be done. I took care of this one. Yes, yes you did. You absolute fucking star. Uh, right, that is all trash. Is there anything around? The whispers told me steal? a secret. Steal all the shit. Hello. Oh, clicked all that. Curiosity sings in my veins. Possessed demon engine hearts. Oh, that's probably not a good idea to collect that. That's definitely a bad idea. Like, what the fuck? We've got a multi key. We should, okay, collect all of that shit. Thank you. Titles and authors are printed in gold in the spines of books. The library contains works on Imperium theology, law, codices, biographical sketches, and the chronicles of the greatest military conflicts in the Cronus Expanse and the Calaxis sect. What lies beyond? Can 
Josie's seating area is completely destroyed. Pieces of furniture and splinters are scattered everywhere. Dark stains cover the floor and upholstery. One oh, that will never at a come time out. Amidst the madness. Um, so basically, a lot of this stuff is not going to be particularly useful, but you can store it as cargo, and cargo can be used in, I think, trade, and also to get extra reputation. So by basically collecting, like, weapons and stuff, it gives you ranged weaponry cargo capacity. Once that's completed, that gives you one ranged weaponry cargo. But the more stuff you collect, obviously, the better it is. So They will see... Oh yes, how that works. they all will see. Okay, so we can do logic. I could open the door. There, done. D one hundred system. Right, so basically, I can. Oh, I Patience. I'm My fucking nerves great. afraid. Uh, that's all stuff. Just grab that. And oh, operator's gloves. I mean, I don't. Apparently, I'm the best at operating. No, nope, not you. Me. So, they, they do actually show up, which is quite nice. Okay. Oh, there's a door. Uh, tech use. It says 88%. Oh, not bad. applaud my brilliance! Restore the power supply. I can do that. Ah, a mere setback. At ninety-three percent. Come on. Ninety-three bloody percent. Oh, I can open this door as well. Uh. There, done. There will be no peace in my oh, wake. Oh, wrong good shit. That's a hundred percent. Genius no triumphs. Let's get a shotgun. Oh, that's my bag, baby. Now we're talking. Now we're packing heat. Uh, melt a charge and some Medicaid. In this tapestry of a world, I am Ooh. the rogue thread. Who can heal? Right, you can heal. You can heal. Melter charges are for um, doing things. They are for blowing up doors and shit. You know, like this one. The Emperor favours me today. Oh, nice level. Excellent. Right, what we got? Bring them down. An officer immediately grants an ally an extra turn with action points equal to two and no movement points. Oh, that's pretty nice. Obviously, we'll take that one. Uh, you get Endure until the warrior's next turn. All incoming damage reduced by minus tough bonus, and the warrior gains plus tough bonus temporary wounds. Very nice. Indira is going to get exposed. The operative removes all exploit from the target to decrease the target's dodge, parry, and armor by 10, plus exploit tax by percentage, by per perception bonus, until the start of the operator's next turn. And Agenta is going to get Revel in Slaughter. The soldier immediately removes the winded effect until the end of combat. The soldier gains the following bonuses. Plus 10 ballistic skill, plus 5, plus 2 times agility bonus, critical damage. Until the end of the combat. Right. So what do you mean the winded? The winded effect. Oh, so if you use that, you get a winded effect. Right, so you can use that one, and then you can use that one, and just basically become a murder machine. All right, cool. Cool, I'm happy with that. One step at a time. Oh, well, hello. Madness. <laughs> Over there. Oh, goodies. We got multi-key, lovely. Okay, that's a thing, that's fine, we'll worry about that. <laughs> they will see. Oh yes, indeed. They all will see. Catechums of St. Drusus. Well, definitely, yeah. 
Can we open that one? It's only a 63% chance. Another notch. What advice do you seek? Some goodies. We've got a deck officer's helmet. Grants 5% armor. Well, that is something that would probably be useful on Abelard because he's the one that's going to be in the front line getting brutalized, more than likely. Okay, we can't get through there. So Curiosity. Through this Things way. Things in my veins. Oopsie. That's probably fine. We don't need that. Frazier, are you right? Wounds are good. You get wound before taking damage. Yes, you do. The roar of flames ringing in your ears and a choking smoke makes you cough and grasp for air. You instinctively recoil from the scorching heat, wiping your face. A moment later, a hazy silhouette forms in the raging wall of fire. You are surrounded by an ear-splitting noise and screaming, yet you distinctly hear the sound of footsteps, and then you see the figure walk out of the fire towards you. It is Theodora von Valensis. Her expression is calm, terrifyingly so for someone whose body is engulfed in an inferno. One of her hands is resting on the hilt of her power sword, and the other is raised in for an inviting gesture. Are you lost, my heir? Argenta goes as still as a statue, then slowly raises the weapon. An apparition, a sorceress apparition, trickery of the warp. Sister, you will lower your weapon. Despite his commanding tone, Abelard does not sound too confident. He is staring at the rogue trader, and you notice a muscle in his cheek twitching. Threatening the Lord Captain is outrageous. Aren't you in pain? Pain is but a reflection of one's weakness, Lord Monstra Abundant. To renounce weakness of spirit in pursuit of greatness is the only path to heights worthy of a rogue trader. Theodore watches you without blinking. Her snake-like gaze almost makes you forget about the fire searing you, leaving burns on your skin. I can lead you out of these flames, Lord Monstra Abundant. Show you the path, rid you of pain, and give you a weapon so that you may defeat your enemies. Decide. Your, your mouth begins to salivate. Each word Theodora speaks is like music to your ears. The entity that now dwells in the deepest recesses of your mind is pleading, begging, demanding that you give her an immediate answer, and the answer could be nothing other than acceptance. Do not listen to this abomination, Lord Monster Abundant. If you, if there is naught but his light in your heart, if you are resolute in your faith, then step into the flame. The Emperor protects. His faithful will not be deterred by either darkness or deceitful promises, nor will the fire burn those who carry the torch of faith in their soul. To the void with you. We need to follow Lady Theodora before we suffocate in this furnace. The people. Abelard looks back at the coughing and confused people around you. Lord Monstra abundant the survivors from the middle decks. We must help the crew. Lead them out. Find a way around. Over the roaring flames you hear distant sounds. Frightened voices and screams muffled and distorted as if they were a body of water between you and them. Then we will miss our chance to meet with Ed. Adira breaks off and starts coughing violently. Her knees buckle and she looks like she's about to fall. Lord Montra Bonnet, what are we waiting for? Sometimes your character will have a, make a tough decision based on their values, interests, and goals. Such decisions affect their convictions. This will right. So basically, it's it's a it's a what a reputation? No, not reputation system. A an alignment system? Yes, an alignment system. So yeah, I got it. So dogmatic, walk through the fire. The emperor will guide the righteous on their path. Heretical, accept the offer of help. Take my pain away and give me power. Or iconoclast, give the Get the people off the bridge. I will not leave my people in harm's way. I'm tempted to go with dogmatic. Iconoclast? Eh, fuck that. But I'm thinking dogmatic. I'm gonna... I'm gonna go dogmatic. Thousands of needles pierce your consciousness, but you are powerless to stop. You take a step forward and the illusion breaks. A wave of excruciating pain crashes over you and Theodora's voice fades into the firestorm. You hear voices of your companions calling you from behind. The screams of the weak dying in the inescapable blaze. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Just got minced! Holy fuck! The blinding inferno, the harrowing pyre, the all-consuming storm releases you as you step out, barely able to stay on your feet. Blood is pounding in your ears, drowning out the world around you. Your eyes, caked in soot and burnt eyelashes, refuse to open. Free from the flames, you take two more steps before collapsing to your knees. The rush of blood in your temples and the horrible pain all over your scorched body cloud your mind. Before the searing retreat, before suddenly retreating, as if driven away by your mighty will, a new strength spreads through your veins and despite your wounds, 
Your body is once more ready for trials and struggle. You open your eyes and see a glow with a warm light before you, the Aquila, the sacred symbol of the Imperium. In the next moment, you are struck with another realization. The repulsive presence, the one that played your mind since Voigtavir wounded you, is gone. The fire seems to have burned that entity away without a trace. Master, can you hear me? Oh, you're alive. Which is more than I was expecting after what you just did. Because I'm always like... I've been listening to the Horus Heresy series, I'm going to be honest. Horus is a fucking idiot, because the Chaos Gods are just dicks. I mean... Like, oh yes, we'll give you power, definitely. There's definitely not going to be a comeuppance for you, is there? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Praise the Emperor. We passed through the flames. Oh, how can this be anything but a portent? For so it is said that the Emperor will bless the worthiest and most steadfast in their faith. I mean, that's a real kick in the nuts for those guys that got literally minced by the fire. Agenta, just FYI. Behind Agenta, you see Adira Tlas doubled over in a fit of nausea. The rest of the people who are following you have withered away in the fire that continues to rage mere two steps away from you. Did you see that, the Aquila? <laughs> We're still alive! Fancy that! Your, Your attempts at humor, at humor are oh. inappropriate. You nearly got us all killed. What happened to Lady Theodora? Did she follow us? There was no Theodora, witch. There was an illusion, a temptation, a foul taint that tried to lead us astray. But he perceived its true nature. Mortarian. I mean, Mort Mort Mortarian gets shitty whenever you go, you're a bit of a hypocrite, aren't you? But he is a massive fucking hypocrite. He's like, oh, oh look at corru oh, the corruption and fucking, oh, the warp. Mate, have you seen yourself? Have you looked in the fucking mirror? You've got fucking wings. If that's not a fucking giveaway, I don't know what is. Is that right, Adepta Sanctimonious? What, we'll just pretend like we didn't see the Lord Captain standing there in the fire? Abelard, you tell her! Whatever it was, it matters no longer. Ugh, your conduct is bordering on madness, or holiness. A path opened behind you, where one moment there was fire, the next only smouldering embers remain. But what am I saying? My eyes must have deceived me. Too much smoke for my lungs. Truly, would you have received wounds like these if there had been no fire? The wounds are merely a sign of a trial laudably past. It is something to be proud of, the same as decorations or badges of honor. Well, I have a lot to help you up. Admittedly, I've been better. Even as you were anticipating another wave of pain, it does not come. Your muscles feel strong and your limbs obey you without fail. And yet, deep inside you, somewhere next to your heart and stomach, you feel a certain tension akin to that of a taunt string. You are at your limit. Be it adrenaline or the strength of your faith, it will not carry you much farther. Edelfard von Valencia stares at you with trying to hide his astonishment and trepidation. Or oh, was abundant. Did my eyes deceive me. I could swear that I just witnessed you step out of a pillar of fire with the rest following you in your wake. I loathe being late for an engagement. Nothing good ever comes from such rashness, yet it appears that the Emperor favours you. Edelfard examines you once more. Be that as it may, your wounds are highly worrisome. Um... Well, they certainly are ugly. I would rather sit this one out while you lot deal with the heretics. Edelfard scoffs. I doubt you can afford the luxury, but I thank you for your thought and rightness. Now I know not to rely on you in the battles ahead. <laughs> I've gathered everyone who answered the Vox call was able to hold a weapon, yet I do not see the Lord Captain or her arch militant in our midst. We are still receiving messages in her voice, but she is not responding to direct requests. I last saw Lady Theodora on the observation platform. When did you and she part ways? It was this very elevator, Master Elthard. The Lord Captain, accompanied by the Arch Militant, headed to her chambers to retrieve an item of particular import. After that, all we heard were her Vox broadcasts. Um, Horus literally attacked her and fought the God Emperor. Yeah, a little bit. 
Yeah, he, he was definitely a little bit traitorous before that. Um, thoughts on the game so far? It's fucking great. <laughs> Genuinely, I fucking love this game. Um, this is troubling, and the timing is inopportune. We are still receiving fragmented reports from the bridge. Kunrad Voigtvere was spotted there, and even what scant intelligence on his activities I have remains me of descriptions of sorcerer's rituals. If the traitor has resorted to witchcraft, we must stop him at once. I shall go to Theodora's chambers to find her. A reasonable approach. Take your escort with you. You may be waylaid. Once you have found the Lord Captain, you must beg her to go to the bridge and lead the counterattack. The rogue trader's appearance is sure to fill the defenders' hearts with hope, however frightened or exhausted they may be. Until next we meet, Lord Monster Abundant, may the Emperor bless your deeds. I shall see you on the field of battle. Your father suits you with a weapon and turns to his retinue. Okay, I did see some loot over here, so I'm going this way. Oh, there will be no peace in my wake. Yeah. We got fire selector mods, high octane, lovely stuff. Patience. Oh, my nerves are frayed. Attention to detail is the key to success. It hey, really is. What's that? We got reinforced thermoplasts. It will grab all that. Oh, it's a door. Love a door. And more goods. Because there's nothing. Oh, profane blades. Definitely, yeah, def definitely should be left lying around. What's this? Oh, grants plus three logic. No harm in that. Uh, what do I need logic for? What does logic do? Logic. Rational arguments more convincing than you notice logical inconsistent than other people's words. Oh, okay. Well, neat. I've got two. Ah, oh, I look great. Fucking fucking a. Love me some goggles. In this tapestry of a world, I am the rogue thread. Okay, Lord Captain's Quarters. Sad to hear. Been wanting a 40k RPG for ages, uh, but you know how 40 games can... 40k games... Yes, I, I do. But this game is... I've, from what I've played so far, I will say that the playtest was a wee bit fucking buggy, so I'm fingers crossed this is better, but it's really good. It's really... From what I've played, I've really enjoyed it. at a time amidst the madness. This looks nice. What? I've found an item that only can be equipped on certain characters. Okay. Convictions. I see. When one of the conviction branches reaches rank three, votary becomes the main captain's focus. When that happens, the other two conviction branches can be raised above tier two. Okay. Okay. A zealot. Oh. oh, also, I've got a wound. Mm, yeah, no, that's probably fine. Curiosity sings in my veins. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, shit, I'm gonna have to get a new chair. They will see. Oh yes, what they all will oh, see. Fair round. Uh, immunity from critical hits. The first three rounds of combat. Oh, I kind of want the goggles. Oh, is five percent armor better than? Oh, you can't equip it because you're not dogmatic. I'm fairly sure there's a way I can hide that. Cause it, oh, there we go. Uh, no, don't show helmet. Okay, goggles I can give to you. That's fun. 
that's fun. Um, it's not without bugs, but most certain, certainly few in the first two games. Oh, that's good. Oh, the commander's dead. So we're screwed. He's wearing two monocles. Now, twice as fancy. Twice. <laughs> Damn right. And now I've had to take them off in exchange for something else. But such is life. Let's loot the, Let's loot all this shit first. Ooh, a rogue trader's cloak. Grants plus five fellowship for every enemy in a two-star radius. I mean, that is... That is definitely my bag. Oh. Now we've got a lovely cloak as well. Patience! My this nerves is, are frayed! This is what winning at life looks like. Uh, plus two con... Okay. Okay. I mean, that's kind of the shit that I want, right? Lovely. In this tapestry of a world, I am the rogue Theodora friend. von Valencius' body is sprawled on a large, blood-drenched desk. The arch-militant's core, still clutching a weapon, is slumped against one. Why can't I take his weapon? I want the, I want the multi-melter. Emperor, accept thy faithful souls. No! I... Lord Captain, I didn't hear... Didn't hear a thing! Not a whisper, not a breath. It was... It was so loud. Why didn't I foresee this? This is set in the 41st millennium. Uh, I think so. I'm not entirely sure if it's set before or after the rift. Uh, Lord Captain. Who would even dare? Uh, unless... That rat, Voightfear. I doubt it. Voightfear wished humiliation, humiliation and suffering upon Theodora, not a swift death. It could have happened in the heat of battle. Not to mention that Mort was here, and he would have protected Lady Theodora to the last. How could Mort have failed her so terribly? The Arch Militant was born on a death world. He had lightning fast reflexes. <laughs> I, I can look at things in my own way. If you find something, something that might bear the imprint of the killer, just give it to me, and I'll try to see what secrets it holds. Examine Theodora's body. Being close to the body. The cause of death is apparent. What ended the rogue trader's life was an auto pistol shot, an extraordinarily accurate one at that. Theodora's face bears an expression of surprise, the last emotion she experienced in life. Something on the floor catches your eye, a heap of blood splattered parchments and scrolls that must have fallen off the desk. As you lean down for a closer look, you notice something else. Small shards of glass scattered on the floor. Idora, Idira, would you try touching Theodora? You might be able to see the killer through her eyes. <sighs> It doesn't work like that. I can try to read the memories of objects, but dead bodies are a different story. Something like that would require her soul. And after what we saw on the officer's deck, I won't risk searching for it in the warp. That was she fighting. Yeah, she was, um, she was very surprised and died immediately. Gotham Skulls. Some of the 41st Millennium's building designs. Yes, that's uh, floating babies with rockets on them instead of emails. Lobotomized Borg. The Imperium is a weird fucking place. Um, examine the Arch Militant's body. An auto pistol shot went straight through Mort's forehead, spraying the floor and the furniture around with blood, brain, matter, and shards of his skull. The safety of the arch militant's weapon is off. The killer must have been a split second quicker than he. Inspect the shards by the desk. I could have done that first, but. It's difficult to say exactly what's broken. The object fell on the floor, and that is as much as you can ascertain. Upon closer examination, the shards appear to be iridescent rather than completely transparent, as if they've been submerged in Prometheum. Idira, what do these shards tell you? I see streaks of color, luminescence, blue lights, faces drawing closer. Lady Theodora and Conrad and... 
What is that? Ah! Something dark. Enormous. Oh, this glass thing was something foul. That's for sure. Tainted witchcraft. Inspect the papers. Reports, accounts, dispatches, you go over the scrolls until you stumble upon a document that is starkly different from the rest. It is a handwritten letter signed with the initials XC and is sealed with a symbol that is vaguely familiar to you. And it sends a shiver down your spine. The author of this letter addressed to Theodora von Valencia signed it with the seal of one of the holy orders of the Emperor's Inquisition, the secret police of the Imperium that relentlessly hunts heretic Xenos and other enemies of humanity. We'd best be on our way. Yes. The crucible of battle calls to me once more. Yep, all right. No, wait! We must see if we can find anything. Idira, you can't bring her back. Let her go. And I've got a spiffy cloak. You'd give up so easily, old man? I expected as much from the sister. It's not like she has a heart. But you? Oh, no. I'll get to the bottom of this. I'll find the one responsible for murdering the Lord Captain. And when I do, that scum will regret the day they were born. Can you make the Road Trader a Psyker? Yes, you can. Yes, you can make that. I think the, the origins are uh, Ast Astra Militarum, Imperial Navy, Commissar, noble a criminal i think and then finally psyker i believe that's correct mm, what lies beyond what's all my ansem you're right yeah you all right okay Off oh hello hello friends oh He's a big Close chunky boy. Spare none of them! Adira, get behind something heavy. Light and medium armor. Good to know. Uh, we need to deal My with you. My place is at the fall. Nope. Okay, so I can hit you. What your target? Yes. Endure! Good job, Abelard. Keep up that shit. Um, I want to do voice of command. A wicked thought. Then we'll do you serve schemes me. Schemes within schemes. And then... Can I do that as well? Oh, I can do that as well. Abelard. Hit that thing in the face. At your back and call. A good hit. Can you do endure again? You've already got endure. I don't think you can do endure again. It can will you? be done. Double endure? No. <laughs> okay. Good job. Good job, everyone. Uh, is that how many? Oh, that's two AP. I can't do shit. That's fine. Right. Oh, Agenta, you are a fucking genius. Uh, tell you what, let's do... No, let's do that first. That one. Sweet. As the Emperor commands, I act. Doubt is for the weak. Eradicate it. You're the best, Agenta. Shocking. Was what an unfortunate turn of fate. It's fine, Ablard's all right. He's fine. So you've got very heavy armor. If we if we do something like that, and then we can expose weakness. Anything else? So you now got expose weak. In fact, if I have a look here, can't, uh, where is he? Combat Servitor there. So he's now got exposed weakness. So, 
10 participants per ruse all exploits on target and decreases the target's dodge power and armor by minus 10 plus exploits tax times 4% until the end of the operative's next turn. Fine. Fine. That was pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Target well struck. Pain and duty go hand in hand. Abelard's just like, what the fuck? That's, that's fucking useless. Um, fifth, did PC Gamer gave it fifty nine percent? Really? I don't personally. I don't see it. I think this game's great. I mean, I don't know. I I really like Lamplighters League, and apparently that did shit. So maybe I'm just not very good. Maybe I just like bad games. I don't know. I don't fucking Victory care. Don't bother me. I don't give a flying shit. I like games. That's great. I get to win. I win at life. Fuck you. Through the smoke and gunfire. Eat shotgun. Okay, that didn't kill him. That's unfortunate. Avalanche. Wicked thought. Can you please, please remove this from my sight? I will do my duty. I took care of this one. Thank you. Is she DPS? She. Okay, so. Of one step at a time amidst the madness. Um, so, I am an officer. Abelard is a warrior. Idra is an operative. And Agenta is a soldier. So our soldier is... Um, it's mostly shooty. Abelard's is warrior, which is mostly melee. Idira is... But, I mean, it's, it's not like you can't... You can't get... You know, you can't not be good at something just because... Um, one of my characters I played was um, a Commissar Warrior, and I found that actually he was really good at close range with a pistol. Like, he could just mow people down with a fucking pistol. It was fucking amazing. It was great. Um, someone did... Oh, yeah, they, they did say that about Realm of Ruin, didn't they? They just, like, slammed it for being Age of Sigmar. I mean, the thing, the thing with the thing of Realm of Ruin is I didn't like it, and I wish I did like it more, and I didn't, and I think it's because it's multiplayer focus, and that just wasn't really what I wanted. So, you know, it's that that wasn't for me. Um, it sounds like it didn't do very well, which is a real shame because I was hoping it would do well. Because, I, you know, we we don't have many RTS games out anymore, and it would just be good. If there was a really good Age of Sigma one, but it sounds like it didn't do great, so that's unfortunate. Uh, the combat was slow and janky, basically. Really? I, 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 I really, I. Okay, this is this is this is coming out of left field, but I like this. I like the combat in this game. It took me a little while to get used to it, but once you get used to it, it actually feels really good and visceral. And I think it is quite a complex combat system, but once once you kind of understand it you can kind of chain things together and there's lots of synergy between characters and I like the combat more than Baldur's Gate 3. Mostly because for all of D&D's great aspects, I don't think it has a great combat <laughs> system, to be honest. I think the combat's a bit shit, but that's just me. That's just me. That's just my opinion. Uh, special Forces, Finest Hour. So that is our... That's a heroic act. Well, what's a desperate measure? Party may only resort to using a desperate measure if the momentum score is lower than 25. If a character's wounds are lower than 50%, it can be used at 75 momentum. Right, so basically we can use it... We can use it sooner, but it has negative effects if we do it. So heroic acts are basically like super abilities. Um, the officer one will grant an ally an extra turn with... For basically, it goes, ha this guy gets an extra turn to do whatever the fuck he likes, which is pretty legit. So we get that one, and we get a new skill as well. Ooh. You look like part of the village people. Oh, what, my my high-vis? Yeah, that's, that's actually the high-vis from my last job. I took it with me. They said they wanted stuff back, and I was like, fuck it, you made me redundant, so... Fuck you. I'm going to take it with me. 
Uh, so, what do we got here? There's so many skills as well. There's like fucking insane numbers of skills you can have. You can have any one of... Well, some of these are locked, but you can <laughs> you can mostly have any one of these. Um, the seven kills a target the noble dealt damage you last turn. Noble gains one AP next turn. Okay. Hmm. Um, I'm kind of tempted to go with... Steel Resolve. Resolve is increased by three. Whenever an ally uses a heroic act, whenever the officer uses an ability on an ally that gain a pie. Right. Whenever an officer uses an ability on an ally, that ally gets a bonus to their perception and ballistic skill equal to fell, but that's going to be quite strong. The bonuses stack, but half of the stacks rounded up are lost at the end of the... I mean, because that means we can use our commanding voice. That's quite strong. You have to offset a uh, target's an ally with an ability for the first time in a round. That ally gets willpower plus bonus temporary wounds. That's quite strong. I'm tempted to get Inspire Courage. Just because temporary wounds, super good. So, I'm going to get that. Basically, whenever we use commanding voice on someone, they just get free wounds to then soak up, which is pretty good. Uh, also bugs, but I played the last Pyrefinder game. Oh, so this looks a lot better. Yeah, the the playtest was a little bit buggy. I did play the playtest to the a little bit further than this, and there was a bug where you would basically get the cinematic for the end of Act 1 before you finished Act 1, which was very confusing. Um, and it also meant that you couldn't then finish Act 1, which was a bit lame. But eh, with any luck, it's fixed, one would hope. Okay, Abelard. Whenever an, enemy warrior attacks the, whenever an enemy attacks the warrior, the warrior's next melee attack against the enemy deals additional plus toughness banish. Mm, that's interesting. Epicenter of Slaughter. Whenever a warrior is attacked, they gain plus one stack of Epicenter of Slaughter until the end of combat. At the end, start of their turn, the warrior gains plus one temporary wounds for each stack. Um, it doesn't sound like it's going to do very much. Thick skin. Warrior gains plus one damage deflection. Their parry chance increased by 25%. Oh, that sounds quite nice. Because if he's going to be like a big old tanky boy... Because he's currently got 30%. His parry chance is 70%. I'm kind of tempted. That sounds... I'm going to get thick skin because that sounds pretty, pretty legit. That sounds pretty legit. Okay. Whenever an operative triggers an exploit on an enemy, the operative gains plus one damage, 2% armor. Hmm, maybe. Expose weakness. Ah, oh, what about... Because you are a psyker, aren't you? Archetype. Tide of Excellence? No, is it going to be that one? When an Imperial World character is affected by non... No, better die for the Emperor. Whenever... One, no. Do my part. No, stronger together. All allies, excluding Xenos in the current party, get plus five, the same characteristic as was chosen for Humanity's Finest. What was picked for Humanity's Finest for you? Because I didn't pick it myself, so I don't know what was picked. What are you? Biography? No. Hmm, not sure. It looks like you use a divination psychic power on ally without unnatural luck. Mm. Mind thief. Oh, that's a lot of. There's so many abilities, though. Enemies currently afflicted with blinded, stunned, immobilization, or prone effects. I mean, we don't have any of that at the moment. Visions of doom. Enemies that become target of psychic psychic power gain a stacking minus 5% penalty to their dodge and power until the end of the combat. So. 
yeah you can increase their psi rating so currently we're only we're only one okay let's just go back to the ones they suggest because i guess they're pretty good exposed weakness costs zero ap oh that could be quite nice because that's just a freebie then Ah, exposed weakness also reduces enemies' toughness and willpower. That's that could be quite useful. It was subpar at launch, but it's great now. I've heard it's really good now. Rapid reloading cost minus two AP, cost minimum one. Ooh, that sounds quite useful. After the soldier deals damage to three different enemies, the soldier gains plus ten. So 10 plus 2 times Ballistic Skill bonus. More damage for the next attack in the current combat. Hmm. Fired up. Whenever the soldier deals damage, their critical damage is increased by 1% till the end of combat. So that sounds quite useful. That's a potential. What else do we have? Uh, Litany of... All of is the area effect of War of Him... We don't, do we have that? We don't have that ability yet, do we? Not Rebel in Slaughter. No. Imperial World characters get plus 10% critical hit chance and 10% armor against Xenos or demonic creatures. The allies get half the bonus. I don't think we've got... I don't think they're going to fight any of those yet. Devotee gains willpower bonus percent chance to ignore any enemy attack. It's not bad. Enemies damaged by soldiers area effects are not, suffer plus one plus ballistic skill bonus divided by two damage for the next turn that hit, the next attack that hits them. Point blank. Near yeah. tracer trajectory. Whenever the soldier successfully dodges or uses cover against an enemy attack, they gain a guaranteed critical hit against the enemy near. The first hit of each burst attack deals additional damage equal to the weapon's current rate of fire. Soldier's second attack action in a turn deals 5 plus 2 times agility bonus more damage to enemies that have not suffered damage from the... God, that's really hard to work out. <laughs> I would never work that out. I mean, maybe just more bolt weapon, right? Just You just shoot people more. 10% I mean I don't think we're going to face many people with like armor piercing at the moment I think just rapid reload rapid reload just sounds like something that's going to come in use a lot so let's go with that um, I started playing Empire of Sin again if that makes me sad so much potential oh yeah Empire of Sin I love that game it just it doesn't go anywhere like I really mm, yeah if their intelligence is less than 35. Okay, sure. Uh, Laz pistols. I... Do I want Laz pistols? Mm. Yeah. Uh, Abelard, what's your intelligence? 30. Perfect. That's exactly what we needed. <laughs> Are you a big Dumbo? Yes. Good. Wear this. Voidship bridge. Like Border's Gate, but longer if you read and listen to characters. Had an old system that makes demanding min maxing to be satisfying in combat. Yeah. Curiosity sings in my veins. The first sacrifice opens oh. the eye. That can't be good. The second sacrifice draws its gaze. Next DLC, Pathfinder DLC as werewolves, and Witch Hags as playable class type. Oh, that sounds quite fun. Eldrathad looks somewhat harrowed, but still in one piece. He glances at you, then over your shoulder, clearly alarmed. Lord Monster Abundant, you are here, but where is the Lord Captain? The Lord Captain will not be joining us. Eldrathad gives you a confused look. Then, as realization dawns in him, his eyes fill with disbelief. No, the rogue trader is dead? Eldrathad shudders and grabs his shoulder as you watch the sleeve his jacket bursts open and two bone growths pierce through the fabric no matter what ritual Kunrad is performing here the warp is too strong I cannot withstand it I feel my body changing with every second the warp ringing in the air 
This is the end. We will perish in the warp along with the warrant and all the dynasties as the enemy of humanity has triumphed. Adira looks anxiously at Eldrathad, then glances back at you. I've seen it before. We'd we better get away from him. The chains are already accelerating. I forbid you the very thought of yielding. Only by resigning to the fate will you suffer defeat. Words worthy of a righteous soul. Save the lofty words for later, will ya? The navigator is ready to take the ship out of the warp if someone can get help from the bridge. After that stares at you in his eyes, Harlem's cold resolve once more. Then we have no right to bow our heads. You can see Kunrad clearly in the gloom of the bridge. The broken blade he is handing is holding is stained with dark droplets that seem to have a pearlescent glimmer to them. We're out of time. Eldrathad bites his knuckle, desperately thinking. You see a wave ripple across the whites of Eldrathad's eyes. They begin to turn a sickly yellow. Void ver, you duplicitous cur! The rogue trader's death will be avenged! What? Theodore is dead? Voigtvir stares at you, seemingly genuine bewilderment. No, that can't be. Not now. I still haven't... Eldrathad lowers his head, then he sighs, locks eyes with you. His gaze, cold, haughty, and fanatical. The ritual will not be completed. I'll take care of it. And you? See to it the void ship breaks free from the warp. Watch over our realm, and farewell. Eldrathad, don't! Your ritual won't be finished, heretic! Oh, he just finished it, so I don't know what to talk about. Oh, that can't be good. Run, fools! Or fall! I will take you down! Okay, we have our... Right, I've, I've fought this... Now, the boss battles are basically like... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? They are almost puzzles. And having having done this one before. Let's save the game here. I I know how to win this one. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Okay, so we're gonna go to voice of Let's command. See. Um I'm going to say. Genius at work. Right. Oh, I've only seen one of you. What about if I... Mm. Okay. Mm. Ah, wait. Ah, fate claims another one. Basically, we have to kill the little guys. I will not. Damn it. Because each time you damage the chaos spawn, it will kill one of them and like regain health. <laughs> good job, buddy. You stopped the ritual. Yeah, good job. Fucking what a guy. Ah, oh, Howen, thank you very much. So you have to beat it with a Terry's chocolate orange. It's not Terry's, it's mine. Um, so we can do we, we can do this. So we've got maximum. Is that right? 200 momentum. Yes, yeah, so we can use. I am his will made manifest. We can use this. As the Emperor commands, ah! strike is a prayer. And we can basically oh, don't I'll shoot do Abelard. Good job. That's fine. Ow! You dick! I mean, the thing is, Abelard's such a fucking boss. I genuinely don't think that they'll be able to hurt him. Okay, I need to get down here. Cover me! And I can do a little scream. Do oh, it exploded. Well. That's unfortunate. Uh, let's go with enemy. How many? You've got three. Okay, so then I can use Anything that. Else? That will reduce his armor. 
make it basically easier for us to uh, deal damage to him. Then Abelard can... We are going to... Brace for impact. We're going to endure. And then I'm going to fucking wail on this. Indeed. Bastards. I could charge, but there's no problem. Okay, I could tell you... No. Come on, voice of command. Let's you. See. Oh, what you. If... you can then give them another it hit. Will be done. Good job. And I can't do another one. Okay, you're going to have to skedaddle. God Emperor, move through me. Oof. Be the fire in my heart. You're right. So you're going to be... You winded? You are winded. So we can use Revel in Slaughter. Faith without deeds is worthless. So I can just unload into you. I'm gonna do that one. And then we can get another shot. Doubt is for the weak. Kaboom! Ooh. Pain the body. Yeah, right. Probably, probably get out of the goo. That's what, what I do anyway. Okay, let's analyze. It's always a good one. How many? We've got another three, so we can do that on you, which is going to give you weakness again. I could do this, but that will bounce and hurt other people so let's just use psychic trick. Was, was that you or okay Avalard good lads uh, we could do daring so warrior immediately gain, restores all AP and MP gains 3 MP until the end of the turn doesn't lose MP after performing attacks warrior has no limit on melee attacks this turn right so basically you just wail on it so we're, gonna just, we're gonna do that then we're gonna use no this matter the cost. I will do my duty. And then we're just gonna slam it. At your him. beck and call. It will be done. Suck a dick. Indeed. Love the Sisters of Battle. Yeah, she's great. Agenta's great. Agenta is fantastic. I don't really. Un so, I mean. If. If, if they if PC Gamer gave it a 59 because they didn't like the combat, I genuinely don't know what they were fucking playing. Because it's good. What do we got here? A blade shard. We've got some gloves of endurance. Whenever the wearer of the gloves gets in injury or falls unconscious in combat, their allies gain plus one. Da okay, good. And a mantle of heroism. Each right that used in battle increase the wearer's dodge by 20% until the end of combat, max 60%. I mean, all that stuff seems pretty, pretty important, so we'll grab that. Uh, we can't. Can you wear that? No. What is your alignment? What would it be? C, isn't it? Can't. I. Oh, uh, no, of course you'll be dogmatic, won't you? You'll be iconoclast. Oh, you're iconoclast. Oh, okay. Oop. Oh, now you've got a lovely, a lovely thing to wear. Good. Um, I've got to be honest, gloves of endurance seem a bit shit, but you may as well wear them because I guess why not? And we've got what we got. I mean, obviously we're going to increase fellowship. Oh, and we get another skill. Um. No, it's a common talent. I'm just going to stack the shit out of Fellowship. Just stack it to balls. Hmm... Kind of what? Well, mm, what? 
What offense features do we have? Crowd kill. Air attacks deal additional plus one plus strength bonus to that for each enemy in the air. So if we, I mean, that sounds quite good actually, because you do have your like swipe ability. So you just like murder people. I like that. Crowd kill. And it kind of makes sense to go weapon skill. Yeah. Let's go with that. Right, you are going to get... Um, it's perception you really want, isn't it? So we'll go with perception. Perception and... Solid projectile. No flame weapon. No. I guess we could go with more perception. Like boost the shit out of that. That was pretty good. Um, you're definitely getting ballistic skill and hmm. Hmm. Gaming journalism is just a joke nowadays. Well, I you know, I don't necessarily agree with that. But on the other hand, that, that review that came out for From of Ruin, which was just someone slagging off Age of Sigmar for the entire review, does feel a bit like You know, if you've got a problem with like the mechanics and stuff or the way the game was set out, that's entirely fine. But I you know, whinging about the the setting is just a weird take. Odd. Very odd. Second attack in a turn, which hmm. Each shot fired by the soldier grants and plus one agility until the end of the next turn. Hmm. Well, probably not going to be next. Uh, Soldier gains pl three plus agility bonus, critical hit chance. Bonus is doubled against enemies from which the soldier is protected by cover at the moment. I mean, that sounds quite useful. That sounds pretty legit. Seriously, like XCOM is the only, only one universally approved by journalism and the public. It doesn't have nearly the depth of some of the other turn-based games. Yeah, kind of harsh. I used to be a game journalist, so I get sent free games. Well, that's come a start. It's always nice to get free games, isn't it? I always feel bad though when people send me a free game. I'm like, I don't really have time to play this. And I'm really sorry, and I would. I keep Cyber Knights. Have you seen Cyber Knights? And that looks interesting, and I keep meaning to get around to play it, but I just don't have the fucking time. There will be no peace in my wake. The air is dead. Hello. Ravor, Master Helmsman, System Status Reports. By the Emperor. It's the Seneschal, living and breathing, the white-haired man with sickly pale skin salutes you. Well, there's a tricky question. The whole place is so overgrown with foul wickedry, we'll be scrubbing off the vid screens for throne knows how long. We need to re-establish contract with the Navigator's Sanctum. It's our only chance for escaping the warp. The words seem to knock your officers out of their stupor and the air around you fills with voices and commands being issued. You can hear someone sobbing, one of the survivors buckling under the stress. Abelard cuffs the crying officer without even looking. <laughs> Restore the Vox channels to navigate sanctum. Ready the crew. Prepare a translation to real space. Abelard pauses for a few seconds before turning to you. Lord Monster Abundant, you may call me superstitious, but translation is not a good time to discard rules. You are the only one who speaks for House von Valencius. You may not be the Lord Captain, but you more than anyone else deserve to take her place in the ritual that is about to commence. He directs your attention upwards, the throne that sits at the apex of the tall staircase. I am ready. Begin the ritual. I uh, didn't like the Ubisoft South Park game. I mean, apparently that was good. It was fine. The image before you is hazy, swaying in sorcerous currents invisible to the mortal eyes, as if whatever is beneath this thin shell is constantly changing while still remaining the same. It has taken on the guise of Theodora, but the false rogue trader's eyes reveal the entity's true, surreal nature. One of Theodora's eyes is engulfed in otherworldly fire, the other a vessel of ancient evil bores into you. A voice seeps directly into your brain without ever reaching your ears, and this voice booms all the horrors of the war. Mortal, 
Who are you to oppose the very flows of fate? The vision lowers its head, its harrowing gaze boring into you. For but a moment, something changes in Theodore's expression. It almost looks like a shadow of fear. It matters not. Your footfalls are an echo of the sand pouring between the scales. Your hopes and faith are my mockery. You. You are to blame for Theodora's death. The vision lets out a cawing laugh. Hi, Zinch. I am the beginning and the end of all that course in between. I am the voice of truth that is destined to triumph for this triumph, the terminal point of every twisted maze of fate. Your head begins to spin and vicious, viscous drops slither down your cheeks. You blink and you are no longer looking at Theodora. It is the traitor, Voigdvir, just as fluid and emethereal as the previous apparition. The same ter vo terrifying voice seized from his lips. The aspirant vows return with a trophy, a relic that could serve the edge of daybreak. The fate was assured and the steps chosen, and yet you broke the unbreakable. When you took the aspirant's place, I see you on the day when the final dawn raise, rises over the iron world. I see you by my side on that day and the day of my resurrection. Definitely Zinch. Uh, do you like the old world mod for Total War Warhammer? Yeah, it's alright. Yeah, nice to be companies as harsh as the Indies. Needs an intern, just not Chaos or style. Damn right. Uh, well, on the other hand, the image is scattered by invisible sorcerous winds, and you see Adira, her eyes aglow with sinister flame. Your image is woven in tapestry of things to come. I am the will of the Weaver of Destinies, and today I will weave a new thread of elusive possibilities and fickle chances. The thread that will lead you out of the moor of irreversibility. The th Jesus Christ, guys. Just, just, can, can we, can we a lot of thesaurus words. The thread that will help you find the key to salvation. The thread that will guide you in the weapon of our return to me. A cavalcade of radiant ash. Hello. A hazy glimpse of the future yet unknown passes before your eyes. A flash of crimson. Purple. The image replaces one after another in a violent kaleidoscope without ever letting you get a proper look at them. Through the rippling mirage, you see a twisted image of Abelard, the loyal seneschal of the dynasty. The path is set, child of dawn. The thread is woven. Follow it, servant of mine. The drunk. Zaku, thank you very much. Change of ways on the line. Hold, please. Ravel turns around and looks up at you. He hesitates for a few moments, then addresses Abelard, who is standing next to you. Seneschal, the navigator's sanctum is silence. The vox signal is stable, which means... Abelard nods absentmindedly. The navigator gave his life battling the storm that nearly claimed the Von Valencia's flagship. We will honour his memory along with those who died this day. Mm. The mother of Druki sends her regards. Nah, definitely cool. You can tell by the subtle... <laughs> He's very... Yeah, very cool. Um, Ravor does not look away. He's giving you a hard stare. His white brows furrow. Seneschal? Will you tell us now? Who is that? Who's? Where's the Lord Captain? As First Officer, it is my duty to inform you with the greatest regret and indelible sorrow that Lord Captain Theodora von Falancius is dead. May her memory never fade from the annals of the dynasty. By right of blood succession, and with the absence of other kin who could challenge this decision, I have done rather well here. Oh, it no, wait. is hereby oh, declared one. that the successor to Theodora von Valencius is her heir, one. the rightful inheritor of the Warrant of Trade and the title of Rogue Trader. The official ascension ceremony will be held at a later time. In the interim, uh, have you lost your tongues? Hail your lord. It is because of his toils that we all still live. The deed is done, Master. In my apologies, I meant to say Lord Captain. Don't fucking forget it. The treachery of the Master of Whispers was fruitless, but victory came at a great cost. Lord Captain Theodora von Valencius perished along with her heir, Edelthrad, and thousands of crew members. Second in line to the rogue trader dynasty survived. 
to hang the ancestral banners once again and exact vengeance on the enemies of House Von Valencius and humanity. Is that everyone in the 40k has eaten a Thorosaurus at some point? They are very wordy, aren't they? So, not all people deserve voice acting. No, they have to be very special to deserve voice acting. And occasionally even the voice actors don't, even the voice acted ones don't get voice acting. Which is very confusing when you go to read something out and uh, he's already starts talking. It's a shame that it's not fully voice acted, but, you know, I do realise that that's, that's quite a big thing to do. Okay, I guess it's me. Deep shadows of weariness can be seen on Abelard's face through the old officer's eyes are keen. They rake over you from head to toe. He frowns, mutters something, and then nods to himself. Well then, your lordship. Let us worry for a few hours there. Abelard offers a thin smile. But after witnessing your fearlessly rushing into the fray on the deck, the only thing that surprises me is how long you stayed on your feet and your strength only left you once the fighting was all over. Such fortitude is most admirable in a lord, Captain. You must now hold your first, officer's, your first officer's briefing in your new role as Lord Captain. For many of those who are about to join us on the bridge, this will be their first briefing. We sustained massive losses amongst the senior and middle-ranking officers. Some posts have had to be filled by the deputies, deputies, deputy, while others go unfulfilled entirely. Now the deck clans are deciding who will take over the leaderless crews. Um, how did we come to lose so many officers? It appears the heretics were deliberately targeting the vessel's command. They knew exactly what they were looking for and where they could be found, which is unsurprising given their informant on board was our own master of whispers, Abelard grimaces. What is the agenda for this meeting? Reports on the condition of the ship and crew, the Lord Captain is not usually drawn away from her important affairs to attend such routine briefings, but this is a unique situation. I am still receiving updates from across the ship. They are not encouraging. Giving this bird fly could be a gargantuan effort, even so far as you personally negotiating with the authorities of the system we are currently in. So prepare to hear a bevy of complaints and excuses, Your Lordship. Take the opportunity to get a good look at the officers who work six decks away from the bridge, and they in return will have the honour of beholding the visage of their Lord Captain. Have you succeeded in tracking down Void Vir? Abelard grits his teeth. No, Lord Captain. In all the commotion, his trail went cold. Our people are still in the hunt for him, and any mutineers who may still be skulking in the ship's many corridors, but frankly, I would not be surprised to hear that we are now one shuttle short. I'm afraid that it will be some time before he answers for all that he has wrought. I'm ready to start the briefing. Summon the officers. With a gesture, Abelard relays the order to the adjuncts at the far end of the magnificent chamber. Uh, thanks for the consume ball. Thousands of pair of eyes bore into the expressions revealing restraint, joy, curiosity, and wariness. Attention, officers, you have been granted an honour. Lord Captain Lord Monstra Abundant von Valensis will personally conduct today's briefing. Our most gracious Lord Captain is ready to hear your reports. Yawn. I haven't the time to be listening to every last officer on the hulking rig, Avalard. Give me the pre precise give me the precise what the major problems and what needs to be done. As you wish, Your Lordship, the navigate the report will go f will be far from cheering. We must find a replacement for our dead navigator. This is a task that is extremely challenging, even under normal circumstances, but the God Emperor's blessing is clearly upon you. We have just ascertained there is a Navis Nobelite station in the Reich Ad system. Such navigator bastions are unbelievably rare, and our having ended up here is inc an incredible coincidence that can only be explained by divine intervention. You should visit the station or captain and find someone who will fill the vacant post. Item 2 on the bad news list. Our engine seer Prime fell in battle. Without his assistance, we cannot soothe the ship's machine spirits. Finding a new tech priest and a Magos at uh, that will be far from easy, but there is some prospect of, su of success. And the third piece of bad news, the last one, fortunately, crew losses have surpassed 2,000 people. If we do not make good on deficit, we will have not have sufficient hands on board to facilitate normal void travel. This system contains a large inhabited planet, Rikard Minoris, which will probably be able to find sufficient workers there. But there is a matter of some diplomatic delicacy. The planet is controlled by House Winterscale, the rogue trader dynasty. We cannot simply recruit people from the planet without first coming to agreement with the governor. Um, do you have any good news to relate? Most certainly, Abelard says, setting his hands on his hips. The air generators have been repaired and are running smoothly. Although, according to the last report, it seems the attackers tried to destroy them. If those damned fanatics had succeeded, you and I wouldn't be standing here speaking now. 
What can you tell us about the system we are currently find ourselves in? I seized the Vox Master on this point. Mistress Tollyman? We are in the Rykad star system. Our voyage here was undertaken on the orders of your lordship's predecessor. There are three inhabited bodies in the system and our attempts to send Vox messages have produced confounding results. The Navis Nobelite station has simply failed to answer. It seems to be maintaining total Vox silence. However, we did receive a distress signal from the prison planetoid in the system and Rykad Minoris itself also not responding to our hails, but what is most alarming is that our augurs have intercepted signals from the surface that seem to indicate ongoing hostilities on the planets. The situation is not very encouraging, but without a navigator, a tech priest, and new crew members, we won't be able to travel anywhere. Therefore, we must go to the planets and the Navis Nobelite Station and find out what the void is going on. Very well. Is that everything? In that case, you're all dismissed. The assembled officers salute you as one. Your Lordship, there is one other thing, a confidential matter of utmost importance. Lady Theodora, Avalard hesitates, your eternally esteemed predecessor, brought the ship here to the system for a reason. She was given a secret commission. You perhaps were wondering who has the authority to commission a rogue trader to do something, and I shall tell you. The Lord Inquisitor, the Hand of the Emperor, and the Chief Architect of his will in the Coronis Expanse. Um... Came across a strange handwritten letter on Theodora's desk. It was signed XC. Are you referring to the contents of that note, I presume? Yes, quite right. XC. Xavier Calcazar. Lady Theodora was to seek out the Lord Inquisitor's right hand man, one Heinrich van Kalox, an interrogator, you understand. All is I know is that he's somewhere in the system, and we must find him and offer him whatever assistance he requires and then deliver him to footfall in the Furbunda system. Finding him without any more information to go on will be difficult indeed, but an Inquisitor is an important individu individual. The authorities in the system, either the Navis Nobolite or the Governor of Rykad Minoris, may know something. That is all of it, Your Lordship. You have a great deal of work ahead of you, but it is a mere taste of the daily burden of a rogue trader. Soon you will take up the reins of the Von Valencius Protectorate. Ablard gives you another scrutinising look, as if trying to gauge how long you will hold under this mountain of problems. His face softens slightly, and it seems that he is about to offer some words of encouragement. Prezies, hello. Idra, Sister Agenda, explain yourselves. The Sister of Battle grimly nods towards Idria. Idira. The Psyker is suffering some ailment of dark madness. She is insisting on seeing the rogue trader. I judged it would be unwise to leave her unsupervised. For a brief moment, Sister Agenda's voice sounds hesitant. I was hoping to approach you with a personal request, but it can wait. Speak with me when you have time, rogue trader. Idira's glazed eyes rove over the assembled. One word burst from her lips. Daybreak. Abelard, bring the witch to heal. Talas, cease your buffoonery immediately and report for the reason for your intrusion. Damn it, Idira presses a finger to Temple's desperation. Y your lordship, here's the thing. I'm trying to see the immediate future and it hit me so hard my head is still spinning. Something very strange is heading our way and I can't make out what it is no matter how hard I try. A single word is all I can make out. Daybreak, or maybe it's dawn and it's ringing and ringing like an echo, like a bell. But if it's daybreak, then why is it so dark? hope the education system improves. It would be hard for it to worsen. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we cannot extract any information of value from a single word. Can you tell us anything else, Mistress Talas? No, not yet anyway. The voices are going berserk, all shouting at once. I can't make any sense of it. As soon as I know or sense anything, I'll report it. All right? Well, Captain, if you want me to take a closer look into your future, find me on the bridge and we can talk. Lady Theodora was well served by whispers on many occasions. I'm sure you'll benefit them from, from them as well. The psyker's bitten lips stretch into a wry smile. Nothing else of value to report. I declare this briefing concluded. It's time to get to work. <laughs> New system map in the centre is issue. Okay, I will. A thin pale woman stands out among the rest of the crew. There is a thick bundle of cables coming from the back of a skull and disappearing under a ceremonial garment. And you see a great of quietly humming vox where her mouth should be. The woman sees you and bows her head in respectful greeting. How may I serve your lord? Connect me to the vessel's main channel. I wish to bolster the morale of my crew. The vox master nods obediently and passes several switches on the device she's holding. It is done, lord captain. We address the crew with a rousing speech and hear your voice roll through the ship, reaching even the normally quiet corners of the vessel. When the broadcast ends, you hear distant shouts of approval. 
Remind me who the fuck you are. Voxmaster Octavus Vidris Sutra Otter of the Tollyman Dynasty. Your current Voxmaster serving aboard your vessel. In accordance with the Seneschal's orders, I assume this duty immediately upon the demise of my esteemed Voxmaster Semitus Septimus, who is my grandfather. What are the Voxmaster's duties? I am the ears and voice of this boardship. I supervise several dozen officers and three times that number of support personnel. Receive, send, encrypt, and decode all incoming and outgoing messages to the ship's internal and external channels. We also ensure clean communication and the optimal efficiency of the crew's Voxcasters. You guys see that Space Marine 2 got delayed a lot. I'm thinking of the... Oh, yeah, no, it did, didn't it? I'm so sad about that. If you ever want to know what worries and concerns your crew are harbouring, what your subjects are whispering about in local networks after their watches, and what the leaders are clamouring about over shortwave Vox transmissions, just come and see me. I will satisfy your curiosity. Have your have the Vox spirits brought you anything interesting lately? Hear me, Lord Captain. I have no information that would be of interest to you at the moment. That will be all for now. Agenda! Rogue trader. No. You said you had a personal request for me? I indeed have a request, Rogue Trader. No. The accursed servants of Chaos who were sold to the ship took the lives of your loyal crew members and they orphaned many children, including the progeny of the brave officer who defended their post until the bitter end. I don't know what customary practices there are for cases like this in the Von Valencia territory, but in the world I'm familiar with, the children of such brave souls could expect to receive some special consideration. Perhaps a rogue trader could meet with the orphans? Um. Make arrangements for meeting worthy rogue trader. I will address the orphans with a speech. Absolutely. As you wish, rogue trader. Thank you for granting my request. Oh. At least his Primaris now, so he kind of got upgraded. Oh, he went through the he went through the change, did he? Look, tiny humans. A group of adolescents, clearly dressed in f their finest, freshly pressed clothes, forms a straight line before you. Some stare at you with wide-eyed, like you're a mythical creature, while others huddle together in fear and look away. Our indefatigable sister has been keeping an eye on these pups. Ablar glanced at the gathered children. It's hardly the scholar progenium in here, but we have provided the orphans on our ship with adequate care and instruction. A gentry is standing to the side of the group. As you approach, she perks up and announces her voice, ringing. Brave ones, the master of the ship has appeared before you. The one who guides it through the darkness of the universe by the Emperor's will. Greet your Lord Captain, the rogue trader of House Von Valencius. Um. Give them treats and escort them to their homes. I believe a minute of beholding their Lord Captain is a great enough honour for them. Ablar gives a sign. The servants immediately emerge carrying packaged treats with Von Valencia's embazoned on the wrappers. It appears the Seneschal came prepared for any contingency. And there they go. You got to look at me now. Fuck off. Ajenta interrupts her temples pensively. She smiles and offers a few more words of encouragement and then leaves the bay. We did it, everyone. Yep, December 7th, baby. It is, it is coming out tomorrow, yes. I literally, I got, a, I think, I think everyone got a key because I, I went on Twitch earlier and I saw like everyone was fucking playing it. <laughs> okay, well that was good. Uh, we got let the orphans see my beautiful visage. So surely they enjoyed that. Oh, that's great. Greetings. Tell me about the Adeptus Soror. Ah, I don't care about. It. Tell me about yourself. About. Me? I am the Emperor's daughter and his servant. What else is there to tell about me? How did you end up on Theodora's ship? I first came here when I found myself in need of passage from Footfall to a remote planet. But I imagine what interests you is not that first journey, but rather what brought me aboard prior to the pirate attack. That story is 
and complicated. It just so happened that I... I made a mistake. In a moment of laxity, I was ambushed by the accursed followers of the archenemy. I was badly wounded. Lady Theodora came to my aid and brought me aboard her ship, while her crew attended to me in my weakened state. It all happened not too long ago. I had barely recovered from my wounds when the pirates struck. Truly, the servants of evil know no rest. There is no place where we can be safe from their machinations. What happened to the people who wounded you? Did Theodora's men eliminate them? Sadly, they did not. Lady Theodora was in a hurry and chose not to stay on the planet. Her people took me to a ship while I was unconscious, and when I came to my senses, we were already flying away. Oh, how I pray to come face to face with those heretics once more, and it's bound to happen someday. I said she's a Warhammer widow. I think my wife is a Warhammer widow, but she just doesn't realize it. When I brought the new Lionel Johnson model, my wife just rolled her eyes at me and said, see you in a week after you paint him. <laughs> Actually, I've got this guy on my um, on my desk. It's a little, it's a little tank. I've got the, the Legion's Imperialis box set. So I've been... I'll tell you what, putting these, th putting these things together is a fucking nightmare. They're so small. The little guy on top, you probably can't see him very well because... The, but there's like a little... He, he's like a separate little space marine that he sits on top and you have to like glue him on and... Oh, fucking nightmare. Logistical fucking nightmare. But oh, I love tiny little tanks. They're the best fucking thing. Tiny tanks and tiny men fucking great. Um, you mentioned making a mistake? It happens even to the best of us. My mistakes are my burden to bear. I'll find a way to atone for them. Good for you. Uh, where did this happen? On one of the recently discovered planets in the Expanse. No one suspected that it had already been tainted by the filth of heresy. Had I known it beforehand, of course I would have been on my guard. Epic back, yeah baby. I mean, what I really want to do though is... I'm still painting, I'm still painting, I'm like, I've been painting this guy for months. But he's my War Master Titan. He's a big boy. Um, he's still a bit naked though, because most of his, I'm still, I'm still doing all the all the highlights on his fucking armor plates and there's so many fucking armor plates so many fucking armor plates he's a good boy he's my, he's my good little boy but every so often I'll go like oh I've got 20 minutes I'll I'll do the highlighting on some more armor plates still just on the side there's so many fucking armor plates oh my god the path to that planet was lost all the knowledge is gone along with the previous navigator. It would take immense effort and resources to rediscover the route. The heir to the Von Valancy's protectorate must have plenty of other issues to deal with right now. Perhaps later, when the skies above our heads have cleared. Yeah, I've got little, little, little boys, little blood angel boys. These guys are actually 3D printed, because... I don't know if you can tell, but like this, so this tank is 3D printed. This tank is one that came in the box set. Which is, tell you what, I got spoiled by, because 3D printing, you just print the thing and then break the supports off and you have a fucking tank. Whereas this, this fucking thing came in about a mil million fucking pieces. It's like, oh my God, kill me now. I want to get a Warhound Titan at some point for my Death Guard army. So, painting stream! Uh, I've often thought about it, but I don't have time to do, like, normal streams, let alone painting streams. What was it like travelling on Theodora's ship? I hadn't been here that long. Just one journey from Footfall, and the other journey, the majority of which I spent in the confines of the Med Bay. I can't tell you much about the first voyage. I was more focused on prayers and ruminations than on the people around me, or the journey itself. I do have a little, do have a little Warhound Titan as well. I've got got four Warhound Titans now, two Reavers, a Warlord, a Warmaster, uh, what's the other one I've got? I've got the one with the big cannon on the back, which name I can't remember. 
and I haven't built that one yet. Not even close. I might have to starve a little bit. <laughs> I want a full-size knight so bad, I might surprise myself with one for Christmas. Nice! Oh, it takes so long to put together. During the last journey, Seneschal Viserion stood out for me. He came by several times to ask about my health. He is an honorable man and a loyal servant of the Imperium. I think he is as meticulous in his inspections of the logistic systems as he is in his inquiries about the health of the occasional sister of battle aboard the ship. Aw, oh, bless his heart. But not all of Theodora's people have earned my trust. You know who I'm talking about. There is no place for Adira Tlas among the God Emperor's faithful. I'm surprised she wasn't in league with the pirates. And I'm equally surprised by how deep heresy and treason run in this place. I'm glad we all made it through that dark hour. May the day that follows be bright. Yeah, that'd be nice. As you wish. Right, um... Right, thank you for the conversation. Bye! Do we have anyone else to talk to? Uh, oh, Abelards. Lord Captain. Uh, let's talk about things that may be useful to me as a rogue trader. A noble aspiration, Lord Captain. I am ready to acquaint you with all the particulars that interest you. Outline the situation the current expands for me. What do I need to know and keep in mind? This is a topic for an official briefing, not a casual conversation. But I will try to answer succinctly. And if you permit, in my own words. <sighs> the Coronas Expanse is considerably removed from the heart of the Imperium. This means that local warp routes become useless within months. Established pathways are regularly subject to attacks from all kinds of rabble. And in the only major port, the Imperium's frigates find themselves moored alongside pirate vessels. Until recently, the Coronas Expanse could hardly have been called a region of the Imperium. The situation has changed with the arrival of the Lord Inquisitor, but not by much. This place operates under its own rules, you see. More radical, so to speak. But ones that allow for a non-standard approach where there is a promise of victory. The Coronas Expanse is considered rogue trader territory for a reason. Only rogue traders have sufficient military might, audacity, and the rights granted them by the Warrant to survive the leap into the unexplored part of the Expanse and in the event of a successful outcome, to hold on to whatever they manage to capture on the frontier. Who are the main players I need to be aware of in the Cronus Expanse? In the first instance, you should treat official representatives of the Imperium with respect. The Expanse may be on the fringes, but it still numbers among the territories of the Golden Throne. The arrival of the Lord Inquisitor has turned the Coronas Expanse into a less wild and uncontrolled region to the regret of some individuals who had grown inured to the local lawlessness. Rogue traders such as yourself are also servants of the Imperium. They have been accorded special rights and powers. They wield immense authority within their territory, and they enjoy absolute respect in other parts of the Expanse. The most powerful of them are Caligos Winterscale and Incendia Bastal Chorda. Tread carefully when dealing with either of them. Noted. If we are to speak of unclaimed territory, which is what Footfall is, among the scum that dwells on that handful of asteroids, there are three factions that wield considerable influence in the sector. The first is the Kasbala Commission, organized crime in its most primitive form. It holds sway over the liege of Footfall and has links to rogue trader Winterscale. The second faction is an offshoot of our shining Ecclesiarchy, followers of St. Drusus. They are actively building their forces, and hold influence over rogue trader Chorda. And finally, the third faction, the Explorators, a wing of the Adeptus Mechanicus. They are willing to die and kill for the secrets of the ancient technological heresies that are hidden among the stars of the Coronas Expanse. Conrad, our previous Master of Whispers, what can you tell me about his betrayal and what do you think he'll do next? Ah, oh, you know, Lord Captain, I am no admirer of fine art. But when we next find ourselves in a civilized port, with time to spare, I will promptly find an artist and commission a portrait of the individual to whom you refer, with a hole between the eyes. Conrad Voightveer. That he committed his treachery and escaped with his life was an unforgivable oversight. 
Yes, it does kind of suck you let that happen. We both served Lord Captain Theodora for many years, and we never saw eye to eye. He was brash. He was never afraid of assuming responsibility, and he willingly took on difficult tasks. I am loath to admit it, but the Von Valatius Protectorate continues to reap the fruits of his labors to this day. His service always garnered my respect. But everything else about him made me want to wring the neck of that two-faced snake. If you are taking comfort in the thought that we will hear no more of Conrad, prepare to be disappointed. You thwarted his plans, his meticulously plotted and nurtured treachery. Yep. <laughs> he is sure to attempt to strike at you, and he will use his contacts and knowledge of the Protectorate to do so. The only question, Lord Captain, is whether you will be able to anticipate his next steps. Yep. As you wish, Lord Captain. I'd like to know more about my Seneschal. As you wish, Lord Captain. What Tell would you like yourself. to know? Who were you before you became Theodora's Seneschal? I used to be an officer in the Navis Imperialis. No. A used to be is not quite right. It was not simply a job. It was my calling. The essence of my life. I was proud to serve Lord Captain Theodora, but in my heart and mind, I am still an officer of the Imperium. I met Lord Captain Theodora on a mission where the Imperial Navy was providing reinforcements to the rogue trader's army on one of the frontier worlds. Our acquaintance was uh, not easy. Working with people outside the Navy hierarchy has never been my Navy, and joined the rogue trader's personal council. Uh, it was a difficult choice for me, but I saw in the offer a chance to serve the interests of humanity even more effectively than in the Navis Imperialis. You do not need me to tell you just how remarkable a person Lord Captain Theodora was. I recognized her at once as a true leader and formidable creative force, one who had built a protectorate amidst the dangers and wildness of the Expanse. All right, well, that's fine. Of course. I must take my leave. Lord Captain. I'm bored of talking with people now. Let's go do some action. A man of action. I was born to lead, not read. Yeah, it's okay, right. So we've got. Where are we? There we are. Right, so we've got Rikad Majoris. The Prison Planetoid, Unidentified Void Ship, that's Minorus, and there is the... So this is the Navis Nobilite. Lord Captain reporting, the heralds of the Navis Nobilitite Nob continue to maintain Vox silence, perhaps due to Urak 5 being off limits to visitors. We intercept signals from the beacons drifting in the station's orbit. The demands are clear. We are told to turn the ship around immediately. We also detected an accumulation of space debris near the station's docks. Presumably, it is the remains of interplanetary shuttles. Perhaps the esteemed Navis Nobilite house requires aid and therefore cannot respond to our Vox transmissions. Contact the station again. I will negotiate personally. Vox, relay the cadent sounds of grinding gears and clicking tumblers. I'm sorry, Lord Captain, the station does not reply, even after an official greeting by a rogue trader and the declaration of your intent to negotiate in person. Turn back. No one dares give me orders. No, Lord Captain, of course not. Order the Orga crew to scan the station. Yes, Lord Captain, the Vox remains silent for a while, but then you hear static and Vigdis's measured voice. The officers of the Orga crew perform a full scan station, but the information is imprecise. They note wave distortions of unclear genesis that are throwing off most readings. We were able to ascertain the reactor core of the station is still active, but many compartments are unpowered and some fully depressurized. The signs of biological activity are largely present in the central module, which means the station has not been abandoned. So the question remains, why are the steam navigators' heralds ignoring us? Order the crew to commence docking with the station. Affirmative, Lord Captain. We do not know what is happening at the station, so you will have to look for the esteem navigators' blind... So you look for this uh, blind. Dock safely and may the God Emperor light your path. Yeah. Begin scan. Hello. Yep, that looks all good. 
Looks all good to me. No use the words of the sister of battle. Nah, she just shoots. She just shoots people. It's all fine. Oh dear. Well, that doesn't look great. Pathetic worm. You dare to argue with your master? It was not you whom I swore to serve within these walls. My lips are sealed. Confess! What was the old man's last command? What are you planning? Give up, Keeper. You have lost this battle. Again. We're getting nowhere with these ones, sir. Permission to execute them. Little bit, little bit dicey. Servants of the damned, the name of House Orsilio, I command you to execute the infidels. Oh, we got executed. They got lasered. Hello. It's me. Master, we have some strange guests on the station. Did I? Oh, there is a room. Good. Um, Felek Orcelio. A tall man stops you with a gesture when you approach. Blood is trickling down from the pearly scales of his weary face. And not just his own blood. Two jet black unblinking eyes are watching your every move, and the third one, the mark of Nagate's fate, is menacingly pulsing beneath the lower lid in the middle of his forehead. Step back or I will unleash all the horrors of the Sea of Souls upon you. Emperor, be my witness. Abelard, if you'd be so kind. The Seneschal takes a deep breath. Before you stands his lordship, the rogue trader, Lord Monst Monstra Abundant Von Valencius, heir to the greatest protector to the Cronus Expanse and bearer of the sacred warrant of trade. Allow me to point out that Nobleite custom requires the Lord Navigator to introduce himself first, but given the <laughs> unusual circumstance of the station, his lordship, the rogue trader, is willing to turn a blind eye to your hostility, but just this once. In that case, I shall turn a blind eye to your unceremonious invasion, but just this once. There is a dangerous glint in the man's dark shrouded eyes. Very well, allow me to introduce myself. Before you stands Felic Christoph August, keeper of this place. So you do not arrive to offer support to the traitors? This is great news. Having said that, you must understand that Urak 5 is a holy sanctum of House Orsilio, and the path of its only revealed to a select few. It pains me to say that you are not on the guest list. Um... Provide me with an navigator, and I will depart the station. I do not think that is possible. Urak 5 is an observation station. We do not sign contracts. Do, pro do not provide navigators. We delve into the depths of infinity and chart the movements of the warp stalls. And besides, for like gestures of the disorder around him, you have chosen it in an opportune time for negotiations. I came here in search of a navigator, so you are coming with me. Is that so? Even wounded, Felek Orsilio remains composed. I don't think so. You cannot force me, and you will only end my life. And there is n not your heart's desire, is it? Perhaps, perhaps we can help one another to reach a more beneficial agreement. Tree wizard claps his hands and he makes a balloon. Um, what agreement are you talking about? You came to the station for a reason. House Orsilio will not be able to help you until the current crisis is resolved. But if you aid us now, I promise we will reach an agreement that you will find satisfying, be it riches, influence, or the powers of our navigators. We're looking for Lord Inquisitor Interrogator, one Heinrich von Kellox. Do you know anything about his present location? Lord Inquisitor's Interrogator? I think I would know. Such an important image you decided to pay us a visit. What is happening on the station? Why did all these corpses come from? Betrayal. The most banal thing in the life of a no Nobleite, don't you think? I was stabbed in the back by my closest friend, Theobald Orsilio, the second keeper of Urak 5, and my mentor. On its instructions, my own people sabotaged the generators, blew up the shuttles, and brutally massacred the loyal servants of my mistress. Most unforgivably, they des dared to take her prisoner. Greedy scum, I swear by the throne's light, their souls will perish in the darkness of the void. 
Felix falls silent for a few moments and furiously slams the end of his staff to the floor. The madmen have captured Lady Cassia and are now torturing her upstairs while we idly chatter down here. How we rescue her or be gone, but waste no more of my precious time. Still lots of jam though. Amber Spear, best spell in the game. It is. Um, what kind of help are you talking about? I would never ask you for such a favour under different circumstances, and yet... Felix takes his hand away from his ribcage, notices blood and winces in pain. And yet Lady Cassia is well-being above all. I have, haven't got many people left, and my wounds are too deep for me to act with, with precision and swiftness. But you, you may actually succeed. In order to ascend to the mistress's chambers, you will need to remake a holy relic sanctified with the blood of Lady Ocilio herself. This is the control rod of the elevator machine spirit. I have one part and the other was lost during the mutiny, but even this relic would be of no use unless the elevator mechanism is powered. How do I make remake the control rod? I have a facsimile containing the mistress's blood. It needs to be taken to the laboratory, which is located behind one of the reliquary doors. The most ancient of sacred mechanisms will help to rebuild the rod. The tech priest ceaselessly perform the rites of appeasement so that the machine spirit would serve the house in its time of need. The fateful hour is now upon us. And how am I supposed to power the elevator? The station's main cogitator is situated in the guard room. Just enter the correct command sequence and the sacred mechanisms will do the rest. If it's so simple, why don't you do it yourself? I never said the feat would be easy to accomplish. The path, the labor laboratory and the guard room is blocked by the very same madmen who took over the station. They will not negotiate and are not afraid of displeasing Navis Nobelite or incurring the Emperor's wrath. They bow only to brute strength, something that I will currently happen to lack. I guess that makes sense. So you've decided you will just... So what have you decided to send it to the Von Valencius line? Um... I will rescue a mistress, but in return I require that House Auxilio sign a contract with my protectorate. Felix's reply sounds curt and tired. So be it. Hurry, the mistress. Safety is all that matters, but should you fail, our arrangement is finished. Yay, we're friends! Best friends. In this tapestry of a world, I am the rogue thread. Ooh. Goods. Take all that bad boy. Over. Caught them all by a force far beyond mortal capacity. The faces are twisted in pain and hands are fused with him. Uh, fused with improvised something. Tools, scissors, and cutlery. Oh, <laughs> they so will rough. see. Oh, yes, indeed. Experience. They Nothing all will see. <laughs> Do you see that? I do. This ocular implant was a worthwhile investment. Drop ahead. Got it. Duty prevails. Never doubt me. Patience! My nerves are frayed! Okay, meandering, meandering. Examine Medicaid. <laughs> Applaud my brilliance. Most of these unfortunate souls took their own lives by slicing their guts by the Curiosity sings in my veins. Well, that's a bit rough. Ooh, some books. Love a good book. Hello? And foam is not let this miscreant defile a horse or cilio. Um, okay. A glorious spectacle of your demise for the Emperor. Oh, right. Okay. That's a lot of guys. Um, okay, let's put you there. Hmm. I'll do it. Come on, a Gen T should have been able to hit that. 
Just, Oni. It's like it screamed death. What an unfortunate turn of fate. It was. It was an unfortunate turn of fate. I am just going to... Yeah, we're just going to take it easy. In fact, you can just take him as navigator. It's hilarious. It's like, nope, you're coming with me. Come here. Come on. I need navigator. Go on, sit in the chair. Ow. My soul. God damn. God, they really don't want to like me, do they? Strike me again and see what happens. I will cry. Right. You. Let's do that one. A genius at work. Let's one. see. Schemes within schemes. As the Emperor commands, Wildfire. I am. <laughs> Ah, oh, Agenta. Fucking... What a boss. What a fucking boss. God, that really... That really does sting. Like, that is... That's rough. Right, I'm gonna, we're not gonna run over here. I'm currently covered in my own blood, which is... Not the best. Hmm. Hmm. It will be done. Good. Charge over Victory here. is imminent. Yeah, Ablard. Ablard does not give any flying shits. Can people, please stop shooting at me. For the glory of the Ablard. I'll do it. Come on. Um, I don't think there's any point in you doing that. If I can get you... Okay, let's get you over here. Hmm. Would you look at that? Well, I'm a bit busy, Adira, but thank you for the update. Oh, my ears are ringing. I just love it how Ablar just does not give a flying shit, does he? He just, just he does he, no shits again. Uh, just a minor setback. Okay, I'm only bleeding a little bit. It's fine. Okay, I'm gonna. Even I won't do that. Oh, that's too far. A wicked thought. Faith yeah, without that. deeds is worthless. Oh. Sweet. What? Ha! No! We should have done one first. Never mind. Do, do, do. Nope. Slicey, slicey. One fewer time. Slicey, slicey. Spencer, thank you very much. I will do my duty. Uh, two deflection, Indeed. sure. Good. Fart doesn't give a flying toss. Brace yourself, Abelard. You're fine. Stop whinging. Um, let's. As the Emperor commands, I act. Oh, come on, Agenta, you can do this. They who descend the future on the battlefield. Don't think we'll probably hit you from there. No, this is really awkward. We've got a really good position. We've got the Avalard being Get a fucking boss. Just a minor setback. 
This is what space marines are like, isn't it? Just like, just not giving a flying shit. I won't sully myself with that. Oh, don't we get you too close, but... Okay, we'll be alright. Even I won't do that. I'm powerless to act. Too far, no. What if? What of course? Well, that's really going to help us. Um, I can always... Let's do that on you. Tried and tested tactics are the best ones. Oh, you guys are fucked. It will be done. Target well struck. Victory is imminent. The end has come. The blood's here to put a chainsaw up your fucking ass. Well, congratulations. You managed to vaporize one of your friends. Good job. Not entirely sure that was the intention. Doubt is for the weak. Oh, come on, Agenda. Come on, Agenda. There is movement in the Empyrean. No can do. Literally nothing you can do. Oh, that sucked for you. Brace yourself, Avalard. Lord, don't give no shits, mate. I won't sully myself with that. Even I won't do that. God, it's really tough to get into range. Um, right, if I go here. Follow my lead. God, these bastards are done. so annoying. Reduced to dust. At your back and call. Ah, Lord, I'll just do this for us. <laughs> this is poor bastards. <laughs> Since this man is charging towards them with a chainsaw, they're worse. desperately shooting him with everything they've got, and he's doing absolutely fucking nothing. I'll do it. Oh, come on. Alright, come on. Come on. Come on. You got this. Rookies! You managed to hit Abelard's. Unfortunately, he didn't do anything because he's a fucking boss. Call that me. Anything else? Well, well. Oh, finally, Jesus. What lies beyond? Let me see. I was just looking for treasure. Oh, treasure. What do we get? What do we get? Anything good? Uh, Ripper Auto Pistol. Ooh, now we're talking. Now we're fucking talking. Uh, what? What, pray tell? Three to five, but it has a rate of fire of eight. Which is pretty fucking legit. Can I equip two guns? Holy shit. Can I shoot both guns? Question mark. Vaxillary of blood. Lovely. What does Agenta have? Uh, she's just got an auto pistol. Okay, that's fine. Too. Would you like a stub gun just in case? You just got a layers gun. Psychic staff is exactly the same. Right. Hello? Mutated flesh sample. Well, that's... Uh, cool. Meteorite chunk. Okay. Oh, there will be no peace in my wake. Is there going to be more... Uh, let's get the feeling there's going to be more traps. What's this? Ooh, hello. That could be useful. A las gun. So we're going to take that. We're going to take the armor. We'll get rid of those two. Now, let's have a look. What do I have for armor? 15%. 
This reduces my dodge penalty. Hmm. So, it's a minus 15% dodge chance and a minus 5. This doesn't really seem better. In fact, that seems kind of trash. What does that do? So that's worse. That is also worse, so it's not as good. However, what I can potentially do, I quite like this, but to be honest, I've got the shotgun for close-up, so I'm going to give you a las gun, because then you've got something to shoot people at long range, and something for close-up. You can have this. There we go. I think I think that works. That works for me. There's a lot of bodies lying around, isn't there? Okay, they're all that. Stub revolver. Well, we obtain stub revolver. We can put that there, that there, that there. Don't really need that either. Don't really need the sword. Can go in there. I didn't even have the good grace to die in a big pile so I can do them all at the same time. What's this? A, D a data crypt H40. Okay. No idea. Genius triumphs! Statue of the famous Kalexian sculptor. Okay. Well, that's good to know. What's this? A good major domo attempts to nurture only the finest of flowers in the garden. That is the master's life. Therefore, new seeds of the garden must be weeded out with the utmost care. So the garden's trees may yield the sweetest fruit. So lesson per se, blah, blah, blah. Right, so faithful servant always make sure the mistress room is clean and garments are clean. A faithful servant will never offer the mistress the same dress presented early in the cycle. A faithful servant offers the mistress a fresh glass of water upon waking. Taste each dish and every drink before serving it to I wonder if that's like something we're going to have to That's like a puzzle or something. Okay, all this is kind of us. So we'll get rid of all that. What's this? Intercept conversations between us. Tremendous honor. Yes, but this promotion will transfer the entire squad to Child's personal guard. By the God Emperor, where you are a strapping lad, you'll probably make it for a cycle of three. As worn down better men than me. What is even the point if your brain turns into mush? I may rip out my eyes like Amos did. At best, I'll go bonkers. Bonkers like that little stain that stealing our Iho. Oh? Over to that one. Threw himself out of depressurized chamber because some voices told him to. Calm down, Keeper Felix said the squad will not, get, not have to serve the child for long. He even gave us a little leeway. Unlike that fish-eyed, be quiet, he might hear you. Oh, one step at a time amidst the madness. Okay. Okay. No, no trap so far. We should deal with this. Deal with what? Oh yes, the trap. The Probably Emperor good. favors me today. Deal with In the trap. In this tapestry of a world, I it's am a the flesh thread. Uh, we'll have to collect all those bits. Idira, stop castigating yourself. Your soothsayings have always been vain. Even if you had her, who among us would have realized that it was Lady Theodora who was in peril? Yeah. Lesson learned. Compared to naval service, that was barely a challenge. Ooh. What we got? Noble silk gloves. More persuasion. I mean, that's probably better than what I've got, right? Tech use. Oh. Oh, they look fabulous. Who's got the most tech use? You've got 30. I've got 35. 30. 30. Okay, well, that's not, that's not great. Ooh, another notch! They will see. Oh yes, they all 
we'll oh, see. Okay. He spotted a trap. Duty prevails. Does oh. What's that? Hollowed finger bone charms. Well, that sounds delightful. Pascal is a tech guy. Yes. Yes, he is. I don't know. What happened to you? It's fatigued. At the end of combat. If game outside, I can't visit the void ships removed. Oh. Oh, because you failed that thing. Right, yeah, that makes sense. Did you hear the screams? Move. We can't hear anything. Oh, is he going to go a little bit mad? No, I see them. You're in league with them. Is this an insurrection? Yes, indeed. Death to the traitors. No, you're all traitors. Traitors, all of you. They told me, they whispered, hey, who are you? Well, that's the end of that chapter. Hmm, what lies beyond? Okay, some random bullshit. Grab all those bits. Patience! My nerves are frayed! There! Done! Ooh, look at all the goodies. What's this? Carapace chest. Ooh, that sounds quite nice. And a long las. It's a double win. Applaud my brilliance. So, what does this do? So it's 15. So this is just better. I mean, I don't look as fancy anymore, but it will stop me from getting shot, which is kind of probably important. The long las is like way fucking better. In this tapestry of a world, I am the rogue Keith thread. Theobald graciously agreed to provide samples of his skin growth so we could study the influence of the rebellious immaterium on the flesh of Navis Nobilite. Just as we thought, navigators are positively resistant to the restless currents of the warp. The God Emperor truly does shield some people against corruption and misery, but let us get back to the study of the mortal flesh. Another servant will be carried in shortly. I must ready the organ extraction equipment. Adamantine dust and black water. This was the worst idea that could have entered my mind. God Emperor be plays. I'm lucky to have still had my my head on my shoulders after this reckless experiment. Nonetheless, did we have make an important discovery that Adamantine seems to protect the fail flesh of the lowborn to a degree. Having said that, not even the Hello? For some reason, the arch enemy's twisted influence has found its way onto the station. Oh, that can't be good. We are done for. They kill us all. I can't take this anymore. Hello? You've got a name. Why? One important? step all at right, a time amidst the madness. Ah, waking the cogitator spirits. The cogitator's vid screen is covered in cracks and stained with dried blood. The button switches and levers are ripped from the control panel with exceptional cruelty and scattered around the sacred mechanism. Now sparks and hisses in agony, still refusing to perish. Awaken the cogitator. You turn a few of the remaining dials and pull the activation lever. The cracked vid screen of the sacred engine flickers. The cogitator's insides emit creaks and groans that lumens oscillate at random. It takes a while, but eventually the machine spirits do grant you access to the cogitator system. Uh, request data on the station's navigators. After a brief pause, the, the data appears on the vid screen. Felix, Ocilio location main hall. Status alive. Theobald, Ocilio location upper chambers. Status alive. Calamoria, Ocilio location upper chambers. Deceased. Alexis, Ocilio location lower levels. Deceased. Rasmus, Istin, Ocilio location unknown. Status deceased. 
The child, location upper chambers, biometric parameters, rapid heartbeat, elevated body temperature, stress level exceed the permissible limit, status unknown, error. Attention, claiming calming procedures advised. Attention, upper chambers inaccessible, error. The control rod is not present. If the rod has been misplaced, immediately contact a station keeper or the Navis Laboratorium cus Custodian. Um, switch the main chamber controls. The cogs within the mechanism so turning with heavy grinding and clacking. The tired machine spirits grant you access to the station control or at least its parts that still obey the cogitator. Open all doors. The cogitator's vis screen goes dark as the machine spirits have fled the mechanical casket, but your assumption is incorrect as it's filled with static just a few moments later. You can barely make out inscription amidst the flow of rapidly changing symbols. Warning! Oh. The... It takes a few moments to gather data for the station's active systems. According to the report, the door has already been opened. Okay. Just going to open all of them. Passage has been opened. I'm just like smashing buttons at random. Is that rolling my face? Okay, that's good. So we wanted the main elevator controls. Activate the elevator. Okay, well that's that's that job done. There will be no peace in my wake. Oh. Does that mean why has the screen gone weird? <laughs> they will see. Oh yes, indeed. They all will see. Bit weird. Not entirely sure I like that. Hello. Hello, sir. What lies beyond? Biogel? Black water? Unidentified. Oh, black water. That was from the other thing, wasn't it? What's this? Psy crystal? Flesh sample? This task should have been the accomplished the most easily. Brutal fashion. Curiosity sings in my veins. Okay, we can remake the control rod. Night, Naffy. What time is it? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, we've done that bit. Where is everyone? Everyone there? Um, in so... this tapestry of a world... I am the rogue. Child's influence Fred. the psycho emotional state of the various representatives of the Imperium. Test subjects with signs of acute stress. The majority perished of blood loss within a day of being placed in the blood or trying to do an inability to, hit, to halt the discharge of ocular secretions. The body subsequently replaced in secretions with a connective blah blah. Death is caused by strangulation of the subject's own intestines. Ugh. Oh dear. Oh, that doesn't sound very good. That doesn't sound ideal. A mantite. Okay. Well, I'd be influenced by the material. It has nothing to do with the child's more frequent tantrums. We discovered that corrupted flesh of muta mutated reacts with un. Okay. I strongly recommend finally grinding the reagent to catalyze the reaction. Do not use acid under any. Trust me, you will not. Okay, this looks like a... Okay, collect them. Is there anything else? Patience! Well, my nerves are frayed! <laughs> looks like there's more writing there. How do I read this? Ah, oh, like that. Winter scale crystal? That's a psi crystal. What does it say? 
corrupted flesh. Meteorite trunk. Fle so that's a flesh sample. Right, that's the control rod. That's fine. That's black water biogel. I don't right, Don't use the acid. It's those bits. Did we have a mutated flesh sample? Ah, mutated flesh sample. So it says crystal. So I'm assuming it's cr crystal, mutated, thingamajig. Data crypt H41 OK, which is H41 OK, which is that one. Okay. So if I go transducer. Adamantite. Oh, we did have a thing about the adamantite, didn't it? Maybe the adamantite is the thing to use? How intriguing. Is it? Okay, well, oh, it one anymore. step at a time amidst the madness. We don't have anything there. Um, did it say something about black water? Oh. That one. Tissue flask was that one. Did say something about oh adamantite dust. Can I use this? Ah, crystal dust. Aha. <laughs> Let's try the crystal dust. Turn on. Oh. Well. Okay. Well, whatever I did, it was they the wrong thing. will see. Oh, yes. They I've got a control rod. That's the main thing. We'll see. I gave it my all, but science, not my bag, baby. Unexpected result. I'm tempted to go back to the void ship, but stack up on the fifty. That's ah, probably fine. Hello. You dealt with the threat and powered the elevator. Well done. I trust you brought the activation rod as well. Remember, every second of hesitation may cost my mistress her life. The crossroads. There are two paths, both stained with blood, both leading to the accused eye. They all wear masks. They're poor and flimsy. They fall at the slightest touch when hiding a blind man, another a traitor. Who? Who is who? Who do you see behind the masks? Whispers are giggling nasty. They need they not speak. The naughty little things. They say that tearing off the masks is your concern. Tell me more. What paths? I cannot say. One is paved with blind faith, the other with hatred and treachery. Both lead to tragedy. You simply have to decide what kind of tragedy you like the most. Thank you. I did not understand a single word. Idira knows tiredly and glanced at Felak out of the corner of her eye. Station has enough problems without your sorcery, Psyker. Um, hand over the key. Thank you, Rogue Trader. I, I don't know what to say. Status and honor prevented me from admitting it before now, but you have awoken hope in me. Hope that I might actually leave the station together with Mistress, which is why I'm about to ask one last favor of you. The lowly insurgents got their hands on a weapon that surpasses my navigator powers. Their absence makes me a living target, but this weapon is useless against you. As there's a bunch of lunatics exploding, I humbly ask you to deal with a scum huddled upstairs and hurry to adorn my mistress with a relic of our house, a sacred amulet against all evil. The recent events have badly disturbed Lady Cassia's psyche, and warp entities always lust for weaker souls, especially when the veil grows thin. You too will be safe next to the charm. Rudolph. You're right. Uh, what, what do I get into? If you turn out to be a lousy navigator of this effort, I will personally feed you to avoid Kraken, just so we're clear. Felix smiles softly and appears relaxed and almost calm. If everything goes as planned, you need not worry about such things. You're going to need this charm. Felix hands you a precious stone without a setting. Its luminous surface remains cold to touch no matter how long you hold it in your hands. And may the God Emperor's light be with you. Okay, I'll get right on. What have I got? Glowing stone. 
I'd rather not. No, well, all right, fair enough. I think it would accentuate your, your natural beauty, Adelard, but fine. Okay, everyone not looking super chill. A pale figure with unnaturally long limbs stands with her arms raised, her hands deformed with talon-like nails. Her deathly pale face is coated with blood that continually streams from her scarlet misted eyes. Her spiny gills, slightly hidden under a disheveled hair, twitch nervously at your approach. Only now do you notice the third eye of the young woman's forehead hidden by a jewel adornment. When your eyes meet, you sense overwhelmingly soul-smothering power. As the otherworldly creature's gaze slides over, your entire core shudders in terror. Flashes of past what nightmares re-emerge from the shadows of your memory and paralyze your will. You grasp for air in terror, drowning under crashing waves of pain. You cannot catch your breath. Hot tears burn your cheeks. Why is this happening? Why is it happening to you? Why do you feel so lonely and in so much pain? Do these feelings even belong to you? Dear emits something between a moan and drawn-out whimper. Ow, ow, ow. As it is, my little pals aren't bad enough. Now this one's banging into my head. Is someone stop her? Heresy. Ah, oh, you would say that. Lady Cassia, I'm here to help. Please calm yourself. Chill the fuck out. So you, you, you really, she really shakes her head and lets out a drawn out sounding similar to a sob and a howl of a small wounded animal. What is happening? Why is someone calling my name? Are you the, all the betrayers dead already? And who are you? Just your average day of 40k. Sounds like me the gym. <laughs> Um, I'm looking for a navigator to join my crew. You look like you'll do. I, Cassia blinks a surprise the pointed nails reach the jewel on her hair, forehead. I'm afraid I cannot respond to such an unexpected. What is this? I feel faint. Theobald Auxilio, the heavy set old man who has been kneeling nearby, erupts into a low sob, his eyes swollen from crying, dart desperately around the room, as though the veil of ignorance has been ripped away from them. The child, Lady Cassia, where are you, sacred child, throne preserved? Despite his venerable age, the navigator leaps up and rushes to the young woman's side. You, the old man's eyes shift, revealing the face to you. It's threaded with jet black veins, and his bulging, milky eyes bear a striking resemblance to those of a dead fish. A sickly sweet scent assails your nostrils if the old man's flesh is rotting inside his decaying husk. My eyes fail me, for they are unable to make out either enemy or ally. I'm warning you, one wrong move will bring the wrath of House Auxilio down upon your head. Watch out, Lord Captain, this one's deranged. It's making the whispers shriek like crazy. He might just open that eye of his. Threatening the head of the dynasty is a grave offence. Esteemed whoever you are, Abelai places a hand on his weapon. At present, I'm trying to determine what is happening on Urak 5. I'll grant that you do not look like pirates who have come coveting the riches of a wreck station, or like the scoundrels in Felix's service, so who are you? Abelard, introduce us. His lordship, rogue trader, Lord Monst Monstra Abundant Von Valencius, heir of the greatest protectorate in the Cronus Expanse and bearer of the sacred warrant of trade, extends his greetings. Another rogue trader in our corner of the galaxy. How interesting. Your kind always makes an appearance in desperate times, ready to cut a deal that benefits one side alone. Given that you are not so far from your weapons, your intentions are probably peaceful. Uh, not so far drawing your weapons. And so House Auxilio now asks a service of you. Save the life of the child in exchange for future cooperation. Do not hurry to answer. Think on it. You can make yourself an ally or an enemy of a house this day. I want to know what happened between you and Felic. Felic is my wayward student. He came to Urak 5 as a callow youth. I personally ment mentored him and trusted him with the care of the child. He was like a son to me, but he proved to be just another traitor. He sought to steal our most precious treasures, the hair of our house. Our sacred child drevel in power with the others like him, casting our house into the abyss to avert the centuries-long traditions of our family. You can see the fruits of his villainy for yourself. He decided to he was not bound by his duty to the legacy of the greatest of the Novat Novatals, Trisphone Ocelio, who led a house to prosperity for countless years. Foolish boy! The renegades clouded his mind. They sought to seize control of the dynasty before the sacred child had come of age and taken up the Novator's throne. So choose whose side you are on, a murderous traitor or the lawful scion of a noble house. Um. <laughs> I've had enough of this navigator feuding. That's it. I'm leaving Urak 5. <laughs> I feel like I accuse you of treachery, Theobald. Why should I trust your words? Defending myself before strangers. I never thought I would fall so low. The old man looks at the unmoving Cassian and shakes his head in recognition. The child's life was not at stake. Very well, I have no choice. Or proof of my innocence. I can give you my word as a member of the Navis Nobelite. 
If the honest word of an honourable man counts for anything with you, I guard this station against calamity and incursions from without to the best of my ability. I forced the warden to strictly observe security protocols. I personally selected every servant. I faithfully protect the child during the coup. Um, you look frightened. The fish eye looks at you unwavering dignity. You are not supposed to see me or Felek or the sacred child. Navigators are highly paid for their loyal service to the Imperium. Imperium, according to his will, no one would dare judge the guise of humanity, the chosen of the galactic sovereign himself. What is the curse that has a hold of everyone in this room? Curse? You do not understand the sacred gift given to our child. When the child is sad, we all weep. When the child smiles, we all laugh giddily. When the child wants blood, the world turns crimson. The child's will is the will of the great Tistophone, for she is the heir of House Orsilio. And they call me dangerous with my witchcraft, it here mutters under our breath. How can you lose control of your own station? Do not thrust my errors in my face. I am twice your age and twice as wise. Take my advice. Trust no one but yourself and the Emperor. Even those closest to you will betray you for gold, power, or the far-fetched idea of a bright future. Um, what service? Hope glimmers the navigator's milky eyes. Save the sacred child. Take her from the station. I fear I don't have long left. A bluish rivet revolts trickle down the old man's chin and he wipes the mutated blood briskly away from his sleeve. You can see strange burns covering the flesh under his clothing. The slightest movement must be causing him unbearable pain. Save the child and deliver her safely to the Regent Aranto, acting house of House Orsilio in the Coronis Expanse. Rest assured, the reward will be worth the effort. I know we came to have a navigator, but after seeing everything we've seen, I've got some reservations about this girl. Persuasion is good, but a loud bolter never fails. Well, Argenta looks at Cassie and a painful pharaoh appears on her brow. Such a fragile thing, such a heavy burden upon her shoulders. But Dorky is expected to die here. My service to the house is coming to an end. The wounds Felek inflicted on my flesh will never heal. I am dying. Praise the throne. Slowly enough to see that child is taken care of. I believe I've made my decision. Um... Let's do away with him. Together. Theobald dips his head in favour of proposition. Where the fuck did you come from? Allies are always welcome, even temporary ones. I will revive the child. Do not be alarmed. The power of House Orsilio's heir will help us to destroy our enemies and shield us from Felix Navigator forces. But you, rest for a time before the battle. Okay. There will be no peace in my wake. So everyone's chill, yes? Oh, hello. Collection of auto quills. Now we're talking. Hmm, what lies beyond? Okay, well, we've learned a lot. What we got? Uh, choose an ability. Sworn enemy. The warrior's marks a target, gaining plus 10 against that target. If the target attacks the warrior during this round, the warrior gains plus 1 AP. Okay. The warrior's next main attack gains plus 5. I'm kind of going with Sworn Enemy. Could be good against bosses. The warrior gains a slash ability. Agi bonus divided by 2 charges. This round. Slash cannot be used in the same. Okay. The warrior dashes through an enemy to the cell on the enemy opposite side and makes a melee attack with minus 50 reduced damage. Hmm. I'm going to go Sworn Enemy. Sworn Enemy and. He's going to be our athletics boy. That's what he's doing. Right, what am I doing? What am I doing? Uh, we got a talent and a skill. Sworn enemy is very good. Yeah, it looked good. It looked, it looked very promising. Whenever an officer targets an ally with an action, the ability or an attack, that ally's resolve is increased for plus one until the end of the officer's next turn. Doesn't seem that useful. That f 
focus could be quite useful. What else do we have? Uh, doing my part. No, no heresy. Stronger together. You do something. If the noble uses an ability on their servant, the ability gains the servant gains plus one AP next turn. Does not stack with itself. The servant kills the target the noble dealt damage to last turn. The noble gains plus one AP. Hmm. Servant has less than 30% maximum wounds. The noble can use you. Serve me once more in battle. Designate a new servant, removing the effect of the previous one. Uh, I'm not sure that's that useful. I am going to say... No one that kind of has the same archetype as this character. Hmm. An Imperial World character is affected by an ally's non damaging ability or effects from an ally with such a. The resolve increased by fell. Hmm. You're. I mean, you're mostly the buff boy, so. Resolve. Hmm. Target gains plus one. They finish the extra turn using the ability. Using this ability. Wait, what? Oh. The target of bring it down gains plus one AP. If they finish their extra turn using this ability, they will suffer. Well. They suffer. Oh, that doesn't sound that good. Whenever the officer uses an offer archetype ability two times in one turn, they will not. This does not. That does not grant an extra turn. They gain the stand witness effect. This officer archetype that does not grant an extra turn will also affect the officer. Okay, interesting. Hmm. 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 Whenever an ally uses a heroic act, that ally gains temporary wounds equal to 10% of their maximum wounds plus resolve. That, I, you know what, that, that does, that could potentially be kind of useful. So let's go with that. Um, do we want to go with more fellowship? I mean, yes. Yes is the obvious answer. Yes, a thousand times yes. Uh, whenever the operative hits an enemy that is affected by both an exploit and exposed weakness, that enemy loses minus three movement points and damage reduced by 20% on the next turn. Ooh, that could really be quite useful. I'm going to go with that one. That one and... Perception. Let's go with that. And you, I think, ballistic skill. And obviously, controlled shot, because. Wait. Can you get anything else? Rapid fire. Soldiers next burst attack will have a rate of fire dull but deals 25% less damage. All shots will follow random projectiles. Any works weapons capable of burst fire. Hmm. Next range that make the burst soldiers deals plus 50 plus 10 times ballistic skill but an additional. Oh, that sounds quite good. I'm going to get concentrated fire. Something that buffs dodge, take that or AP rapid fire. Well, I was I'm I'm tempted to put the AP, but I think at the moment we don't really have enough skills to warrant getting a lot of AP. Patience! My nerves are frayed! Okay, so what am I doing now? Do I need to talk with you? Hello? Do I just have to go down and beat the shit out of this guy? Curiosity Look no further. sings in my veins. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you coming? Oh, go on. About time we pay those who betrayed our house. Come. It's time to lay the smack down. You treasonous worm, I knew I should have killed you. I have altered the deal. Pray I do not alter it further. Enough, boy. You betrayed the child, our house, and Tistiphone herself. Surrender. And the saviour of our house, I'm prepared to pay the ultimate price. Kill them. Oh. Another annoyance. Yeah. To his enemies. Uh, right, Abelard, you can start there. I'm going to start hiding, and Idria, you can start over there. Okay, there we go. Agenta. Ah, oh, you get the first move. Perfect. Concentrated fire. <laughs> and this is arranged. This. As so the emperor commands, I act. How the fuck did you miss? I'll do it. Agenta, do just do some target practice or something. Fuck me. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna schemes within schemes. A wicked thought. We're going to try this again, Agenta, all right? As the Emperor commands, I act. Okay, that was a little bit... That was Yeah, that was more like it. Good job. That was good shit. Does that count as an attack, does it? Because I've still got one. I guess it. I guess it counts as an attack. Oh no! Uh oh, this is gonna sting. Oh, I thought he was gonna do his eye attack. It. It does have XCOM vibes. Yes. That is not my destiny. Is it not? That you, what an unfortunate turn of fate. That was good. Abelard, do you want uh, a little bit for warning? Duty prevails! Abelard dodged, because of course he did. Kind of like some of what makes XCOM combat good. I mean... I don't know. It's... Well, I, think, I genuinely think the combat's really good. I really like the combat. Do, do, do. Uh, it will be done. What? You are done it. Bouncing here and there and everywhere. Hacking uh, people uh, to pieces with a chainsaw. Oh, I can do... Will rule breach. the stars themselves. Indeed. I took care of this one. Get fucked. It will be done. I will do my... You're running out of friends. Oh, I forgot that guy was still alive. Gentle, could you could you be an absolute boss? Guided by faith. Yeah. Oh, I don't really need momentum. <laughs> what I need is for you to nail this dickhead. Okay. Doubt is for the weak. 
I know I've run out of ammo. It's fine. It's all good. I am powerless to act. So, come down here. Let's tell this to the gent to do some shooting. Work. You got Fate this. Yep. Ice the fool. No, I can't. What if? Oh, because that cost two AP. I should. I should change the long lads. That only cost one. Never mind. Are you sure you're not a secret call worshipper? Nah, I'm always Nurgle. I'm always a Nurgle boy. Uh, do you have any movement left? That's fine. Oh, you're giving like a voice of command. Oh, what thank you. That's very kind. Uh, I will shout at him to death. And his head fell off. The above Cossack bluish blood, the armor plate on his chest is perforated in a few places, and there's a tangle of metal and viscera where his abdomen ought to be. The navigator's pale eyes find Cassia. Oh. Your destiny demands. Yep, that one. No! Don't leave me alone in this violet brown haze! Wake up! Your mistress is giving you an order! Do you hear me? I think he might be dead, love. He was a fine seer of the war. He fought for his mistress until the end. Ah, uh, yeah, no. Enough's enough. I've had my fill of waterworks, thank you. Enough, tears. you're coming with me, now. And if I refuse? What? Um, what are you going to do to me? If you wish to leave the station alive, you must first sign a contract. You will undertake to service my navigator until I release you from your obligation. I beg your pardon, but what about my servants? Your Act 5 is still full of people loyal to House Orcelio. Um, you can secure new servants once we're out here. Hmm. I am afraid you leave me no choice, Lord Captain. I agree. Now take me to your vessel. Ah, that's what we call the art of the deal. One step at a time amidst the madness. Auto gun, shotgun. Oh. Is that a better last gun? God, auto guns are bad, aren't they? Now, well, all these dead bodies give me plenty of. There will be no peace in my wake. Oh, I bet you've got some good shit. What have you got? Armored body glove. Okay. You've got a, a dead shot stub revolver. Ooh, well, that sounds good. Also got thrice pioneer's braces. Every time you wear it, deals damage to targets. Weapon skill, ballistic skill is reduced by minus five for two rounds. Stacks up to three times. Okay, interesting. Tactical goggles. Love a tactical goggle. Staff of a Cilio Guardian. Uh, eyes targeted by the navigator's powers gain plus five bonus to all the navigators until the end of the navigator's next turn. This bonus stacks is pulled to the navigator. Okay, that's yeah. That's kind of meh. And these are pretty base standard, I think, so. That's fine. What lies beyond? I've already got one of those. Well, my nerves are frayed. Okay, bit of a win. Oh, Cassia's leveled up. Okay, what you got? What you got? So, you are... What are you? You are an officer, which is the same as me. You've got finest hour... What else do we have here? So, you probably want... A fellowship. Uh, fellowship and 
I guess more fellowship? No, whenever a creature in combat gains an extra turn, that gains a stacking 5% willpower until the end of... Okay. Enemy effective on navigator's ability suffer attacking. Minus 10 penalty, next resistance test. Okay, that's not that useful. If the navigator's perception is higher than agility, their dodge is calculated using perception instead, which it is. So that could be quite useful. Three additional movement. Meh. I was up talking about that because plus 10 percent armor. This additional damage reduced without the veil degradation. Mm. Every navigator or tower they've taken. Oh. That's pretty, pretty legit. Do I want additional fellowship? Yeah, let's do some of that. I'm sorry, are you, are you still... You're glowing. Why are you glowing? Is that normal? Should you be glowing? Who knows? I mean, the game explains a lot to you about the universe in comparison to Mechanicum or Bolt Gum. It really does. There's a lot of a lot of information there. And if it's kind of the bad guy in the universe. Yeah. They... Yeah. Yeah, there's no real good guys. They asked, in fact, um, Gorka Morka, which is the Mad Max type 40k game, is the first place where they were sort of said to be mushrooms. Lord Captain, Lady Navigator, welcome aboard. The Sanctum Navis has prepared for the communion ritual, but if the Lady Navigator wishes to rest in her quarters first... Your heart starts beating furiously. Your best becomes short and choppy, and your fingertips tingle unpleasantly. You notice the, that Vigdis is shivering slightly, and the crew are glancing around in puzzlement, searching for the source of this sudden wave of unease. Without even looking at the Vox Master, Cassia waves her away. First, I wish to speak with the rogue trader. Leave us. Uh, of course, when you're ready for the ritual, please let me know. Cassia sweeps a pensive gaze over Vigdis, then lowering her lashes slightly turns to you. <laughs> I do not wish to speak to you. Go to the Sanctum Navis now. By what right do you issue commands on my vessels? Do not forget you are alive solely thanks to my magnanimity. Cassia's ruby red eyes seem to glitter with some intense emotion, whether anger or fear, it's hard to say. Casting her eyes down, she then continues quietly, choosing each word with care. Forgive my instance, rogue trader. It was not my intention to weave coppery threads around you or to appear ungrateful. Tell me more about the ritual entails. I doubt the uninitiated could understand the mysteries of navigation, but I shall try to explain the essence of it. I must merge my mind and will with the machine spirit of the ship so that I become one with the vessel. Cassie lifts a lock of hair from the back of her neck, revealing a gilded implant port. After that, I use the house auxilia ritual, which I am loath to reveal to you, to free my mind of all errant thoughts, and then... Then it is time to open my third eye and peer into the depths of the warp among its nightmarish visions, mirages, and creatures of the abyss. Only the light of the Emperor is the truth that will lead me from star to star, from the system to system. Oh, the light, the guiding thread so fine it can slip from one's grasp at any moment. Cassia unfurls a hand as though dropping something. But you have nothing to worry about. The navigators of House Orsilio never lose course. Uh, what do you wish to speak about? Nothing of consequence, I see now. For you have already made it quite clear that on board this vessel my hands and lips are bound by your will. Therefore, I do not wish to fritter away time on pointless conversation. I am ready to go to the Sanctus Navi, Navi and perform the sacred rite. I require brushes, canvas and the best paints you have on board, but no red. Why do you refuse red paint? It is my habit to use the blood of my attendants as to preserve my own. However, given the current circumstances, my own will serve even better. The blood of the Navis Nobilite is sacred and so more suitable to the communion ritual. Um, I shall ensure that all necessary supplies are delivered to the Sanctum's Navis. Cassia nods and thanks. I shall take my leave of you for the duration of the rite. I ask that you do not follow me. Few can survive the gaze of my warp eye and when it is opened.
Lord Captain, I will oversee the open channel between the Lady Navigation and the bridge, and may the Empress Light help us all. Space Rats. Why have they never put Skaven in 140k? Very weird. The Vox cast from the Sanctum Navis picks up the Surrection a susurrection of clothes, pious chanting, and the metallic clinking of implants. Then the serene voice of Lady Navigator breaks the silence, initiating communion ritual. You hear the exultant ring of metal freed from its scabbard, and then the stifled grasp of the Lady Navigator, the rhythmic drips of liquid on canvas, and the faint whisper of a brush. I see violet vortexes lashing on an ocean of a million flails, and the umber shadows spinning over the surface of a fiery dance, a storm rising above the foaming waters, armadas drowning in fog, and the path from one end to the other cannot be seen. And here, beyond the wall of glass, a daughter, forsaken by her father, yearns for her brother, and the sun's pale disc goes into the tire's pursuit. Of her? No. Of me. Its frozen rays lie that the spring is here, the light is dead, and the great ruler is gone. The Voxmaster recalls that Cassius words and accidentally snaps one of the cogitator levers. The panel beneath her fingers emits sparks, and the Vox cast to fall silent. She quickly flips a series of switches and bows guiltily. My object apologies for cutting off the broadcast, Lord Captain. I've never heard the Walt speak through a navigator before. The connection restored. It will not happen again. Voxmaster, see that you receive five lashes for this show of clumsiness. What is happening to Cassia? Soul shredding screams drown out the Vox transmission. The servants of the Sanctum Navis are howling and shrieking like wild beasts, moaning in pain. Their throats roar from the strain, and then, sudden silence, the dull thud of bodies dropping proclaims their fate. It, it appears the servants were past the Navy Navigator's right, as if it was for her predecessors. I will arrange for the bodies to be removed from the Sanctus Navis after the ritual, or what is left of them. Road Trader, I fear I have unfortunate news. Endless blackness has spread across the canvas, dividing what should be whole in two, and my sight cannot glimpse the light of the Emperor as clearly as before. I cannot turn around, my brush only draws me onward, the way is blocked. You hear a heavy exhale, rustling fabric and metallic clinking. By the Emperor's grace, the ritual was successful. Your vessel's temperament presented a challenge. Its cold still grip did not allow me to breathe freely, even for a second. It was as if the depths of the ship housed not only one machine spirit, but something other. Now I will retreat to my chambers to recover my strength. Send for me if you need me. Lord Captain, congratulations on acquiring a navigator. Spare me a few moments of your time, please. There are several matters that require your attention. First of all, I want to report on the condition of the station at Iraq 5. Had you opted to begin your visit at R the RICAD system with a different destination, the station could have been a critically unstable. Fortunately, the decision to immediately visit the representatives of Navis Noblite brought us precious time. We can either send our forces to assemble the station and procure technological components for our own vessel, or attempt to save as many valuables as we can. Uh, gather any components that may be of use to the ship. As you command, Lord Captain. With your permission, I would also remind you that we are still looking for an engine seer prime. Both the vessel and its machine spirit are desperate need of an oversight by an experienced tech priest. We are also missing some crew and have, more importantly, have not yet located Heinrich van Kallox, the right hand of the Lord Inquisitor. Now we have, now we know for sure he was not at Urak 5, so keep this in mind when making any future plans. Why is it always business to you, Big Dis? Can't you just sometimes visit me and tell me how wonderful everything is? Certainly, Lord Captain, if you're interested in this week's past, I'm not. I am not. Um, did we get anything for the ship then? Oh. Oh. Oh, we got some scrap. We can upgrade the hull. Increase hull integrity. Oh. Oh, we can upgrade the ram. Torpedo control, swing ram, and posts. I mean, obviously, I should be supreme commander. What does that do? Expedious reload. Okay. Oh, so I've got focused efforts. Okay, so you could go there. Warp wave. Cause an enemy ship to immediately turn 45 or 90 degrees. Actually, it's a shadow. I'm going to put you there. And 
a vulnerability scan. Damage dealt to its weak point is... Okay. Arc Augury. Okay, it's plus two range. Hmm. Let's put you there. And the only other person we don't have is... Oh, we have everyone. All right, good. Oh. In the playtest, there was two other designs. They were still all the same class of ship. You didn't get anything bigger, but they, they looked different. I don't know if there was like any difference between them stat-wise. Okay, what do we pick up there? We did get the dead shot stub revolver. I don't know if that's something that might be good for you. Like, if you can't hit someone, you can just shoot them in the head. Could be useful. Mm, I'm kind of tempted to give that to you. Because you're more likely to do, like, AoE damage, so that kind of makes more sense. You definitely need more two hits because you can't hit the broadside of a barn, Agenta. I'll be honest with you. I'm sorry, love. I don't want to be. I don't want to be harsh, but I'm gonna be. You, you, you missed a shit ton of shots there. A point blank range. Very disappointing. That's fine. We'll give you some goggles, and with any luck, that'll help with that. Get you. Get you back on an even keel. Yes, there is there is some ship customization. So there was um I think it was like a monitor. I think it looked like a monitor uh, the system defense monitor from from Battlefleet Gothic. And there was I can't remember what the name of the ship is, but it's got like fins on the back. Like T fins. So there was that one as well. I've heard that they 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 got a lot of reports the ship combat wasn't very good, so I think they did work on it. So I think it's I think it's better, but I've not yet tried it. Unfortunately, it's now ha well twenty past midnight, and I need to go to bed. I'm going to be up at like six o'clock, and that's not many hours sleep. So um, this game is actually out tomorrow, which is really good, and so you can play it then. Alternatively, I am going to take Friday off and I'm going to stream more of it then. I think because I really like it. It's, it's a fucking great game. There's a lot of stuff going on because this is like the first area and later on it kind of opens up where you can actually just like send your ship, you just like send your ship through the warp exploring different systems and stuff, which is really, really cool. And this is almost like a tutorial act, basically. So, once you finish this on this one, the game kind of like really does open up. It's really good. You used to watch Total Biscuit and his friends play Battle Armada. Uh, is that Battlefleet Gothic? I fucking love Battlefleet Gothic. It's great. I mean, basically, I like anything which is really, really small stuff. Like. You know, small tanks. Small tanks are fun because it means you can get more stuff on the on the map. You get more you get more tanks. More stuff explodes, and that's why I like stuff exploding. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll be back maybe tomorrow. Depends. Depends how we go. Until then, thank you very much for watching.